I'm calling State of Wisconsin versus Daryl E. Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Morning, Judge. Sue Lassen, Leslie Daisy, and Zach Woodshaw appearing for the state. Sir, would you please state your name for the record? I am here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value in return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. All right, the record should reflect that the individual known to this court as the defendant, Daryl Brooks, is present in court. He's in custody, but he is wearing street clothes. He's wearing a suit and tie and a mask. And good morning once again to everyone. Also, for the record, I do not identify by that name or consent to being called that name. So noted. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have a 13th subpoena? As I, as we discussed yesterday, you wanted to call 13 witnesses. I told you you had until this morning to fill out another subpoena and give it to the state so that they could review it. Yes, I do. All right, can you hand that to the bailiff, please? I'll just take a look at it quick. Mr. Brooks, I'm reviewing this for completeness. And you have simply put on here, State of Wisconsin plaintiff, that's an entity. You have to name a person, sir. The date. Uh, well, the date we would fill in. Um, so I'll have it shown to the state, and they can let me know their position on that. Any legal basis why that would not be accepted, Your Honor? You have to have a person named, sir, so that they can come and testify. You only have an entity named. Is it uh, not true that under the Sixth Amendment I have the right to face my accuser? Mr. Brooks, let me hear from the state. Yes, Your Honor, I agree with the court's assessment. The subpoena does not state a person. The subpoena uh, form specifically indicates that the person requesting the subpoena is to indicate the witness's name and uh, address. Mr. Brooks has simply written the word State of Wisconsin Plaintiff for the witness name. The State of Wisconsin is an entity. It's not a person. The State of Wisconsin cannot testify at these proceedings, so the subpoena should be rejected, Your Honor. Uh, I object to that, Your Honor, um, on the grounds that um, every document that was filed in this matter stated that the state of Wisconsin was the plaintiff, which would lead me to believe that the state of Wisconsin is who's bringing the claim against my client. How could they not be subpoenaed to testify if they're the plaintiff? And under the Sixth Amendment, I have the right to face my accuser. My accuser in this matter is the plaintiff, which is the state of Wisconsin. Um, Attorney Opper also brought up that it didn't have a, an address on there. None of my subpoenas had addresses as we went on the record. And that was stated that a lot of the paperwork that I have don't have a lot of the people's addresses on there. And those subpoenas were accepted. So I don't see the difference with this subpoena not being accepted for the reasons that Attorney Opper just stated. Mr. Brooks, in relation to that subpoena, based upon my review for completeness, this court would note you have not named a person, you have named an entity, um, and uh, the subpoena will be kept on file as part of the court record, uh, but I'm not going to require the uh, state of Wisconsin to testify in this case uh, because they are an entity and you have not named a person. 
Are they not? Or are they or are they not the plaintiff, Your Honor? They are the plaintiff in this case, sir. And why are they not uh, able to testify being that they... Sir, you've not named, you've named an entity, not a person. People are called to the witness stand to testify. You have had an opportunity to cross-examine every single person who has been called by the state to testify in this trial. Um, I believe uh, that your Sixth Amendment rights have been complied with. Uh, not if I'm not allowed to face my accuser, Your Honor. My accuser in this matter would be the state of Wisconsin. And with all due respect... Sir, I believe your Sixth Amendment rights in that regard have been complied with. Um, I'm requesting uh, a written judicial fact, finding of fact and co conclusion of law on this issue um, for the grounds that I just stated. Um, it, it was seen based on the Sixth Amendment that I'm not being awarded the chance to face my accuser, which I should be awarded that based on the Sixth Amendment. If I'm not able to face my accuser, then how can the claim even stand? How can how can a claim be brought against my client if I'm not able to face the accuser? So this case is a criminal case in a court of competent jurisdiction in the state of Wisconsin, Waukesha County. Uh, this case was initiated initially by the filing of a criminal complaint. Then there was a preliminary hearing where probable cause was found. After that point, there was an information that was filed. Um, and at some point, an amended complaint, perhaps even a second amended complaint, uh, was filed as well, putting you on notice of the charges and the uh, factual basis for those charges along with the statutes uh, that are alleged to have been violated. Um, I'm not going to explain any further why you can't call the state of Wisconsin in the way that you've subpoenaed them or attempted to subpoena them uh, for the reasons I've already stated. Um, I understand uh, where you might disagree with the court's ruling, um, but my ruling stands, and uh, I'm not requiring uh, the plaintiff in this case uh, to uh, serve that subpoena in any way for the defects I've already noted. Uh, may I stay for the record? And also, hold on, I'm also not going to issue a written decision on that. The record speaks for itself. May I stay for the record, Your Honor, that um, I have not even seen a, a complaint in this matter um, and the jurisdiction still has yet to be proven which is another thing that needs to be challenged there there has not been proven that there's subject matter jurisdiction as of yet there there's no verified proof of it there's um, no verified proof of even a claim if especially if I'm not allowed to face my accuser and um, I, I don't understand uh, how you can make that judicial decision, Your Honor, when it's clear it's clear discrepancies in the paperwork of this matter. Um, like I said, I have I have yet to see uh, jurisdiction be proven. It has not been proven. I have yet to see a complaint. I have not seen that. The um, court has provided you with, I believe it was the second amended criminal complaint, along with uh, the information that was provided to you previously and noted on the record. I've already addressed your motion to dismiss previously. Um, I'm not going to revisit that. There's no legal basis uh, requiring me to do that, sir. Um, the plaintiff in this matter um, has presented witnesses to establish venue. Um, and again, as I've noted previously, it's a criminal case with criminal charges, with um, a second amended criminal complaint detailing the factual basis upon which uh, these charges are based. We're a notice pleading state. Um, and along with the information, you have been made aware of all of the charges and the penalties you face and the factual basis upon which the state has brought these charges. Uh, we are in the middle of trial. Your objections are noted. 
uh, we will continue today with the jury trial. For the record, may I respectfully move for an interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter, Your Honor? Your request is noted for the record. Um, I'm not an appellate court, sir. For the record, may I move to stay these proceedings until this instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction? Your request is denied. Based on what law or fact, Your Honor? I've previously addressed the issue, sir, so based on making, law of the case. Are you making a judicial de determination that I'm not awarded my Sixth Amendment right to face my accuser? I'm not making any such determination here today. All right. What uh, law or fact? I'm going to turn to the district attorney's office. Do you have a witness available? <coughs> yes, we're ready to proceed, Your Honor. All right, our jurors here. All right, the jurors will be brought out, sir. Your Honor, with all due respect for the record, you, you, you're avoiding my questions. Mr. Brooks, I've addressed the issues that need to be addressed this morning. I've also addressed the same issues probably every day we've been in court. I know you may be dissatisfied with the response that I'm providing to you, but my responses stand. It's, it's not a dissatisfaction, Your Honor. It's... It's a lack of understanding, which I don't have. I, I don't even understand the, the, the true nature and cause of the charges. And without, Mr. Brooks, you've been made aware of them multiple times. I do not understand um, them, I is what I'm saying. I encourage you once again, if you don't understand anything, to seek the advice of an attorney. I cannot give you legal advice. I'm not asking for that, Your Honor. Um, I'm, I'm merely asking um, why, why are my constitutional rights being prejudiced? It states under the Sixth Amendment that I have the Sir, right. Sir, I've already addressed this. Okay. We're not going to have any further argument on this topic. All right. Your Sixth Amendment rights are being honored no differently than any other defendant uh, that has appeared in my court. Have any other defendant not been awarded the opportunity to face their accuser? You are facing your accuser, sir. Every single witness who's been on this stand, you have cross-examined. None of those witnesses are, are making a claim. None of those witnesses are the plaintiff. None of those witnesses are identified as the injured party. An injured party has to make the claim, Your Honor. A, a living Sir, it's my opinion that your belief as it relates to that is mistaken. It's not um, a lawful argument, and it's frivolous. I direct your attention once again to the uh, Benaby decision. Is that, or is that not a, a federal uh, case, a, a United States? You're asking me for legal advice. I'm not going to provide I, that I'm to not, you, sir. I'm just asking what, what kind of case it was. Was it federal Supreme yes, Court case? Yes, it's a Seventh case, Circuit or? Court of Appeals case. We're in the Seventh Circuit, sir. But you just stated that you're not a Court of Appeals, so, but you're, you're citing a Court of no, Appeals case. No, but Court case. of Appeals case law applies to this court, sir. I'm bound by legal precedent from the various courts that are above me. And you're still not explaining how I'm not able to face my accuser, which is my Sixth Amendment constitutional right. Sir, to I'm not going to explain the law to you. I've made my decision. It stands. I'm not arguing that, that part of it, Your Honor. I'm just merely stating for the me? record. Yeah, I heard the door. Okay, thank you. I'm merely stating for the record that I should be awarded my Sixth Amendment right to face my accuser. Your objection is noted, sir, once again. We'll continue this morning. Thank you. None of, none of the witnesses that testify are the accuser. None of the witnesses that testify are the injured party, which a claim has to be made by a living, breathing human being. Sir, I which think you're confusing not. civil law with criminal law. That's what no, I'm saying. No, I'm confusing. I'm, con I'm not confusing any law. The Constitution says that I have the right to face my accuser. And under the Sixth Amendment, I'm not being awarded that constitutional right. I think that that definitely needs to be on record, and that definitely is an issue that needs Your to be raised. Your judge has noted, sir, if you believe I've erred in that regard, you can raise that issue on appeal if you are convicted. May I put Your Honor on notice that I uh, intend to appeal that decision? Your statement's noted for the record. Is that a judicial determination I will not be able to face my accuser, Your Honor? 
I have not made any such determination, sir. Will you be making a judicial determination? Sir, I have not made any kind of determination that your Sixth Amendment rights have been violated. On the contrary, I believe this court has honored those rights. Even with me not being able to face my accuser, which is the state of your Wisconsin. Your position plaintiff. is noted, sir. Is it's that noted a judicial for the record. I've already addressed it. Is that a judicial determination? Sir, the record speaks for itself. Is that a judicial determination? All right. I believe the jurors are coming out. All rise, please. Are you going to answer that, Your Honor? Or is no. that a tacit agreement? I'm not going to answer that further. I've answered it multiple times. Is it a tacit agreement? It is not. Then I should be awarded, awarded my Sixth Amendment right to face my accuser? <laughs> or a judicial determination should be made? Record to reflect that the jurors are coming in for the morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The record should also reflect that I receive no answer to that question. And good morning to the remaining jurors who are filing in. Of course, we stand for you, so when you come in, you can have a seat. And thank you, everyone. Please be seated. State may call its next witness. Thank you. The state will call Stephanie Bonesteel. Good morning, Ms. Bonesteel. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right. It is up a riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. My name is Stephanie Bonesteel, S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E. B-O-N-E-S-T-E-E-L. Thank you so much. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Bonesteel. Good morning. Could you please tell me uh, your occupation? Um, I am the head of the marketing area of Citizens Bank. And uh, directing your attention to November of 2021, mm -hmm. uh, were you tasked with assembling some uh, co-workers to march in the Waukesha Christmas Parade that year? Yes, I was. That um, is a common thing that we do, okay. is participate in parades. Okay. And uh, did you have a co-worker by the name of Jane Kulik? Yes, I did. What was Jane's uh, role at the bank, please? Uh, Jane was a teller at our Waukesha branch. Okay. And did Jane agree to participate in the parade on November 21 of 21? She did. Were you there? Yes, I was. Did. Uh, Citizens Bank have a float in the parade? Yes, we did. Could you describe that, please? Uh, yes, we had a float um, that was pulled behind a vehicle. Um, it was decorated for the season, and um, we do not have anybody riding on our floats. Typically, we have people who walk alongside the float and hand out um, candy. About how many people were participating with your group that afternoon? That afternoon, we have 15 in our group. Eight, eight employees plus seven uh, friends or family members. Okay. Did you actually walk in the parade, ma'am? Yes, I did. Okay. And did Jane actually walk in the parade? Yes, she did. I'd like to um, display for the witness only exhibit number 47, please. Go ahead. In a minute, it'll show up on your screen. Just tell me when you see it, please. I see it. Okay. Um, do you recognize the people and the events that are depicted in exhibit number 47? Yes, I do. Do you see Jane Kulik in this picture? Yes, I do. Does this, uh, are you in this picture? I don't see that I am. Okay. Did you walk in the parade with any family members? Yes, my um, daughter and my son were there walking alongside with us, and my husband was driving the vehicle. Okay. And uh, the actual photograph that I've put up for you, you don't see yourself in that photo?
I don't think I see myself in this photo. Okay. Do you see Jane Kulik in the photo? Yes, I do. Are you able to identify Jane in the photo? Yes. Do you believe this photo was a true and accurate representation of the way Jane looked that day as she walked in the parade? Yes. What do you remember about her clothing? Um, she had on um, a hat. I guess I would describe it as um, a Santa hat that looked like it maybe had a mini mouse bow on top. And um, she had leggings on um, that were patterned. Um, we, um, several of us, were wearing red ponchos that we provide to anyone who's participating in a parade if they wish to wear them. We don't make them, but um, it's just another layer of warmth, and um, it then is obvious that we're part of the bank group with those red ponchos on. She and she is wearing a red poncho. All right, permission to publish or move to admit and permission to publish number forty-seven, please. Exhibit 47 is received permission to publish as granted. Objection. So, uh, Ms. Bowen, still the screen in front of you, the touch screen, could you just circle or mark uh, with an X where Jane is in this picture? Whoops. <laughs> And it looks like maybe she's in the act of throwing some candy or something like that. Is that right? Yes, that's why I believe she must have um, can those blue bags had candy in them. Okay. Now, did there come a point uh, as you you could take that down, please? Did there come a point in time when you were marching in the parade when something awful happened? Objection. Overruled. She may answer. For the record, she did shake her head in the affirmative. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I'd like for you to um, kind of walk us through it as you remember it, okay? Start out by telling us, you and your kids, where were you as a relationship to the float that your husband was driving? Um, my kids and I were on the driver's side of the vehicle, um, but behind the vehicle a ways, I would say I was probably 10 to 15 yards behind the uh, back corner of the float. Okay. So there's the truck and then there's the trailer with the float on it, right? Yes, the truck, is, it, we have a Suburban. The Suburban was pulling the, the float. Okay. So you were... <clears throat> The truck, the float, and then you're still 10 or 15 feet back. 10 or 15 yards. 10 or 15 yards. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And what's the approximate age of your kids? Um, at the time, my daughter was 13 and my son was 10. Okay. So they're near you? They were near me. I knew they were on the same side of the street as I was. I knew they were ahead of me, so closer to where the vehicle was. Okay. Um, but I didn't know exactly where they were. They were also walking along and throwing out candy. Okay. What do you remember next? I <coughs> spent a good time um, as the leader of the group. I'm always keeping my eye on everybody who is participating to make sure everybody's doing well. I also was, um, during this parade, looking back at the unit behind us. Coincidentally, my daughter's two friends were um, part of the Waukesha Extreme Dance Team, so they were performing. In the unit behind us, and I, when I could, would look behind and glance at the girls dancing. Okay. Um, at one point, I glanced behind me towards where the dance team was. I turned my attention that way because there seemed to be some sort of commotion. I, 
can't explain what it was. Parades, if you've ever been in a parade, are very loud. There's music, there's a lot of crowd noise, but something made me look and think, what was that? Okay, something unique, something that wasn't right. Correct. Um, overruled her answer may stand. Um, keep that in mind going forward. Go ahead. I turned my attention back to, forward towards our group and I again turned back towards the dance team because again something maybe I had heard something maybe that again seemed out of place and that's when I realized I saw headlights. Now were these headlights part of the extreme dance team or something else? I realized within a second or two that no. I could see the truck, I believe it was a black, a larger back, black truck that was part of the dance team's unit. Okay. I saw that and to the right of that, so it would be the, again, driver's side of the um, truck is where I saw this other set of headlights. Did the headlights get closer to you? Yes. I quickly realized that the headlights were coming basically straight at me. Were you able to get a description of this vehicle with the headlights driving in your direction? Um, as it passed, I realized it was an SUV. Do you remember the color? I do not. Okay. You remember it was an SUV? Yes. Where were you when it passed by? I was on the street. I was near the curb, but not up on the sidewalk. Okay. Would that be the south side of the street or the left-hand side of the street as you're marching westbound? No, I'm sorry. South side of the street. Yes, it would. It would have been the south side of the street. Okay. And um, again, it, it appeared the headlights were coming straight at me and then turned a little to the right, so more towards the center of the street. Okay. Um, shortly before it passed me, I would say the vehicle passed me within three to five feet. Okay. Were you able to see the driver of the vehicle? No, I was not. Okay. What did you do when this vehicle went past you? Honestly, my biggest concern is where my kids were. <coughs> I didn't know exactly what their positions were. More than I was concerned about getting out of the way, I was concerned that they were not in the path of this car. Did you see the car continue past the float for Citizens Bank? Yes, after it passed me, and I was searching, I did notice that there was a clear area on the street ahead of me, about to where the vehicle was. Okay. Not, not, not so much the float, but the vehicle. So there was the- The one your husband's driving. The one my husband was driving. Okay. Um, again, the street was, was fairly clear. So I was searching the, searching with my eyes and running up towards the crowd on the side, again, looking to see if I could spot my kids. And that's when I noticed that there was a person 
in the street um, about where our vehicle was about um, it's hard to tell exactly where but I would say next to the some part of the vehicle um, your husband's vehicle right okay. and this person was running um, forward um, I assume trying to get out of the way did you see who the person was at that point I couldn't tell exactly who it was I knew it was someone from our group because um, I could see the red poncho and I could see the hat. I should mention that Jane was not the only one wearing a hat. There were two other people um, that were wearing the similar hats. Okay. Did you see the SUV strike the person running in the red poncho? I did. Tell us what you remember, please. I remember seeing the vehicle basically moving at a pretty high rate of speed towards the person that was running. I saw, I do remember seeing taillights, but not brake lights. And I, again, am, am watching this from the back. I could, see, I think before I even re, re, remember seeing anything, I heard a very loud impact. What did it sound like? A very, very loud thud. And then what? At that point, I also remember hearing a very audible gasp. I don't know where, if that was from the crowd, the, the people watching, or if it was from the person that was struck. I then saw um, from the back, I, I guess it maybe wasn't enough of an angle, I could see that there was a person on the vehicle, and I did see red poncho above the roof of the vehicle okay. at one point for a, for a second. Did the SUV then pass around your husband's truck on the driver's side? Yes. Overruled. Her answer may stand. Where did you see it go? I saw it continue forward. Um, around the front of the vehicle and from there I lost sight of of the vehicle and at that point I um, I just started going through the crowd and to find my kids okay. were you able to locate your kids <laughs> yes were they physically injured in any way? No, they were not physically injured. How about you? Were you physically injured in any way? No, I was not physically injured. <coughs> After you found your kids, you remember where you went or what you did? I found my son first, and then I found my daughter within a few seconds of one another. I grabbed onto them and um, a few seconds after that my husband came running from where he was okay. and grabbed onto us. At some point I don't know who, um, I don't know if it was people from our group, I don't know if it was the crowd, but people grabbed us and moved us up onto the sidewalk. All right, thank you, ma'am. I don't have any other questions at this point. Thank you.
Brooks, any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. For the record, I don't consent to that name. You stated that you were uh, part of the parade as the uh, Citizens Bank. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, was that your first time participating in, in the parade, or have you done it before that that evening? We have participated in probably 20 parades over the last five years. I have been in that particular parade at least once before. Uh, you said that you saw uh, headlights from the vehicle that was approaching. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall if it was uh, still day daylight at that time? I would say it was dusk. And what would you consider to be dusk? Still light or... It was more dark than light. Do you recall about what time of evening that was? Um, based on when the parade started, I would estimate it to be about 4.30. So from your recollection, it was more dark at 4.30 p.m. than light? Yes. <coughs> And you, you also testified that the vehicle came three to five feet from you. Is that fair to say? Yes, it is. Would you say that's pretty close? Yes, I would. And you also said you weren't able to identify the color of the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So my question would be, with the vehicle being that close, how were you not able to identify the color of the vehicle? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. Were you able to see a license plate from the vehicle? I'm sure I would be able to see, but in a state of fear and panic, I wasn't able to register what it was. So would it be fair to say that because of that same reason is why you wouldn't be able to identify the color of the vehicle? Correct. You also said you saw tail lights. Would that be fair to say? Yes, I did. Were the tail lights bright? They were illuminated like normal tail lights. Would that, for any reason, be able to impede you from being able to see the license plates? Objection, argument. Grounds? Sustained. Do you recall uh, where you, or let me back up, did you, did you go inside of uh, any buildings after the incident? Yes, we were um, asked to go inside of the Nice Ash Cigar Bar. About how close was the Nice Ash Cigar Bar to where you were? participating in the parade? Um, it was pretty much right there. Would that have been on the side of the street that you were on or the opposite side? That was on the same street side, same side of the street that I was on. 
do you recall if you were close to any intersections at that time? Um, I was more in the middle of the block than closer to an intersection. Do you remember any cross streets? Because you, you said you were in the middle of the block. Do you remember the cross streets or the next cross street that would have been uh, ahead of you? I would not be able to name the street by name. I am not that familiar with downtown Waukesha. Do you recall uh, any side streets at all during the uh, parade route? I do remember crossing several of them. Do you recall if they were barricaded in any way? Um, most of the streets had a large number of people standing in them. Whether there were barricades behind the people, I am not sure. Did you observe any law enforcement uh, standing at those cross streets? Yes, I recall seeing law enforcement at at least some of the cross streets, some of the cross streets. And you testified that you did not see the driver. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall uh, giving any uh, police report or being interviewed by any law enforcement? Yes. Do you recall uh, if that was the same day of the incident or in the days following? I gave my statement to a police detective um, on Friday of that same week, the day after Thanksgiving. So that would be around the twenty sixth of twenty twenty one, November the twenty sixth of twenty twenty one. Would that be fair to say? I believe yes. It would be November twenty sixth. Uh, do you recall why it would take almost a week to be interviewed or to make a report? Objection, Grounds. argumentative beyond the scope of the witness' Grounds. knowledge. Grounds. Also calls for speculation on the part of the witness. It's sustained. Do you remember who the law enforcement officer was that you gave your statement to? He was a detective with the Waukesha, uh, City of Waukesha Police Department. I do not recall his name at this time. You stated that you don't recall um, seeing the path of the, uh, the traveling vehicle after it had passed you. Would that be fair to say? I did not see the vehicle once it had traveled beyond my husband's vehicle. Did you see it strike anyone at that point? I saw it strike a person when it was parallel next to my husband's did you, vehicle. Did you see it strike anyone after that point? No, I could not see the vehicle past that point. Did you see the vehicle strike anyone before it got to the location that you were at? No, I did not. Do you recall uh, reading or seeing a complaint in this in this matter in any way? Objection. Grounds. Sustained.
to the best of your knowledge, have you filed any claims in this matter? No, I have not. Would you consider yourself to be a party to this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Were you aware that it might be a a possibility that you would be called to testify in this matter? Yes, I did. Were you in fact subpoenaed by anyone to testify in this matter? Yes, I was. Do you recall by whom? By the state of Wisconsin. And when you say the state of Wisconsin, uh, who do you refer to? Objection, Grounds? Sustained. Have you had any interactions with the state of Wisconsin? Objection. Grounds? Stay. Sustained. You may rephrase if you so choose. Did you have any phone conversations or any physical conversations with the state of Wisconsin? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. You can rephrase if you would like. Do you even know the state of Wisconsin? Objection. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. It would be fair to say, uh, based on your testimony, that you were, you were in fact called to testify by the state of Wisconsin. Objection. Asked and answered. Grounds. I, I didn't even finish the question. And I had the grounds on that. Finish your question and then I'll rule. Seeing as how that you were called to testify by the state of Wisconsin, it would be fair to say that you've actually saw the state of Wisconsin. Objection. Grounds. It's vague. Grounds. Sustained. To the best of your knowledge, would the state of Wisconsin be the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. And out of grounds for the sustain? Sustained. Your Honor, with all due respect, the jury needs Next to question. know this. They deserve to know this. Next question. Are you aware that to the best of your knowledge, are you aware that for a case there has to be an injured party? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Grounds. Sustained. <coughs> As you said, the state of Wisconsin called you to testify. Did they at any time identify themselves as an injured party in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Reason for the sustain, Your Honor? Continue, Mr. Brooks. Any reason for the sustain? It's sustained. May I have the grounds, Your Honor? Keep going, Mr. Brooks. This is information that the jury deserves to know, Your Honor. The jury is the judge of the facts only, and the court is the judge of the law. Keep going, Mr. Brooks. No further questions. Can you redirect? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you, ma'am. You may step down.
may call your next witness. Thank you. The state will then call Adam Bone Steele. Good morning, Mr. Bone Steele. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right. It is up a riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left across from you, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. First name is Adam. Last name is Bonesteel. A-D-A-M. B-O-N-E. S-T-E-E-L. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bowen Steele, thank you for being here this morning, sir. I want to ask you about the events of November 21 of 2021, okay? Yes. Were you participating in the Waukesha Christmas Parade that afternoon, sir? Yes. And what was your role in the parade? I was driving the float for Citizens Bank. And uh, <coughs> your wife, Stephanie, works for the bank, is that right? Yes, I was volunteering with her. <laughs> and the rest of the family. Yeah, right. And uh, you, you said you were driving the float, is that right? That is correct. Were you driving a vehicle pulling a trailer with the float on it? or? I was driving a Suburban pulling the, the trailer. Okay. So you have uh, a full-size Chevy Suburban? Yes. Which is like a large um, SUV? 2019. Full-size SUV? Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. Overruled. His hands are my stand. And the float was on the trailer behind you? Correct. Okay. Do you know about how long the trailer was or the approximate size? 12, uh, 12 by, I would say, 8 feet by 12 feet. Okay. Now, when the parade started out, um, were you alone in the car? No. Who was with you? I had a, uh, a six-year-old daughter of one of the employees oh. with me. She was in the passenger seat. Okay. And other than that, you were alone in your car at, with her? Her and I were in the vehicle, just us two. Okay. Were you um, playing any loud music as part of your uh, group's presentation? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, do you remember if you had the windows on your vehicle up or down? The window on my side, driver's side window was down. Uh, on her side, it was slightly down. Okay. And uh, do you remember during the parade something unusual uh, that your attention was drawn toward? Objection. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Along the route? Yes. Um, yes. Um, it would be important to note that the, the groups got spread out. Okay. And it happens in parades where one's going faster and the others are going slower and we got left kind of in the middle. <laughs> we had a lot more people, you know, walking. <laughs> and so there was a gap. The, the dance crew behind us was a good half a block behind us. The dancing grannies in front of us were about another half a block in front of us. Okay. Um, <clears throat> driving in the parade, I generally you know, want to know where my walkers are, so I'm always in my mirrors watching my speed. They come up, they grab candy off the trailer to throw to the crowd. So, you know, you have to be very alert. Okay. Now, you've driven in parades before. Yes. Because you're a good husband. <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, the uh, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, would you say that would, consistent with your practice? Did you do that in this float? You're constantly aware of what your surroundings yes. were, and the people walking with your group. Yes. The people ahead of you and the people behind you as well. Correct. Okay. Um, do you know downtown Waukesha pretty good or okay or <laughs> no? <laughs> Not very good at all? No. Okay. Um, do you know the parade route? I did know the route, but I couldn't tell you cross streets. I can't tell you, you know, those specifics. Sure. Um, do you know where you were along the route when the trouble happened? Well, I know the landmark would be the nice ash bar that was basically right. We were in front of where we were in that block when things transpired just because they took us in when businesses were locking down my vehicle got 
basically blocked in by emergency vehicles. Okay. I was not able to leave. Sure. And, you know, when everything was going on, they basically took our group in. I started packing up like I could leave, okay. getting the float packed up and just wanting to get my family home. Yeah. And it got to the point where police officers came by as they were taping off the area and said, you can't be here. Okay. So my vehicle ended up staying there overnight. Okay. So let's go back to the, uh, the point where um, you notice something is going on in the parade. So uh, like I, we had started, the parade route had gotten, you know, with our groups kind of uh, separated. Uh, I noticed when I had looked out my driver's side side mirror that I saw headlights behind me. And I remember thinking briefly, you know, what's the dance guy doing behind me? Why is he so far off to the left? Okay. Um, basically when that thought was over, I heard the roar of an engine and I was watching in my side mirror and saw a woman running kind of towards the corner of my vehicle, the back corner in between like, let's say by the tongue of the trailer and we're trying to get to that point in my vehicle. Okay. And then saw the impact and heard it as well as the roar of an engine. Okay. Let's just break that down a little bit. Okay. Um, so first you notice the headlights, then you hear the engine and you see a person running. Did you know who it was at that instant? No. no. Okay. I had no could idea you, who the person was. Could you tell it was a member of your group? Yes. How could you tell that? They had the red cloaks on. Okay. So then you said you heard something? Oh well, yeah, you heard, I heard the, I heard and saw the impact. Tell us about you that please. heard a car hit a, another car or a an abutment or a deer. If anybody's ever hit a deer with their car, you, you've heard it. Um, I watched the body fly up onto the hood and her head snapped back and the body remained on the hood as it passed the side of my vehicle to where I thought I could have just reached out and grabbed her. So this happened that close to you? Yes. You saw all this with your own two eyes? Yes. Did the car continue past you? Yes. Where did it go? The car veered kind of in front of me. I saw brake lights and saw what it what was Jane fall off the hood. He proceeded to and she was on basically on the on the right side of his vehicle and he proceeded to run her over with the right front tire then the right rear tire and at that point i was just focused on the body on the ground but i remember hearing the roar of the engine again and how fast were you going two miles an hour how fast would you estimate the other vehicle was going 30. did you get a description of that other car it was red that's all you know like a box type back in. Okay. That's all I know. That's all I, I again, once I, I, I thought my wife was the woman on the car. So you see your whole life going by you, you know, in, in what you think is an act of terror because you don't know what's going on. And then a body is laying on the ground. And I, you know, at that point, that was my only focus. I, my vehicle, I threw it in park and ran to decipher if this was really who I think it is. Okay. Um, details of which direction the vehicle went after that, yeah. I cannot tell you. I'm okay. sorry, it was, it was tunnel vision right to the ground. Of course. You do distinctly remember though seeing the red vehicle that you've described roll over the person on the ground. Yes. With both tires. Yes. Let's show you an item that's been marked as Exhibit uh, 46, please. And we're going to put it up for you first and have you take a look at it. So, is it up on your screen, sir? Yep. And right now the, uh, the video is not playing. It's uh, frozen on the first frame. Do you see that? Yep. Do you recognize what you're looking at here, sir? 
Yep. What are we? What are you looking at? It appears to be Jane on the ground. Is that what she looked like when you ran up to her? She was on her side, face down. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask. Those the, are the pants. Yeah. Those. Okay. I'm gonna have my assistant play this video through for you. It's a total length of 15 seconds. Okay. Yes. I want you to watch it, and then I'll have some questions for you. Okay. Okay. Mr. Bonesteel, did you see yourself in that video? Yes, I did. Do you believe this video is a true and accurate representation of the events as you ran up to Jane on yes. the street? Move to admit 46 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Exhibit 46 is received. Permission to publish is granted. For the record, Your Honor. It's noted. All right, um, so Mr. Bone Steele, in this frame, I don't see you in this frame yet, correct? That's correct. But we do see Jane laying there in the road, correct? That's correct. She's got the red top and the black plaid pants. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. We're going to go ahead and play it all the way through, 15 seconds at normal speed. That's you right there in the khaki pants at the six second mark? That is correct. Black sweatshirt. That's you right there at the end. Sunglasses on your head? Okay. Was that a yes? <coughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Do you know if uh, medical assistance was provided to Jane? I do not. What happened? Once I realized that it wasn't um, Steph, I ran back to find her okay. and the kids. And I found them yeah. back by the vehicle. Okay. Um, after I had found them, my next um, thought was, oh my God, Addison's behind us. That's my daughter's good friend and uh, another friend. Uh, was also there, and I ran back to, to find her. With the extreme dance group? Yes. Okay. Did you find those girls? I found Addison. Um, Sam had been struck. What's Sam's last name? Coelho. Okay. Um, I asked Addison if, you know, if she wanted to come with us. Um, her mother was actually waiting at the end of the, the parade route, so she was in route to 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 get her but okay. then i went back to you know my family and the rest of the group that was that we were in the parade with and at that point the uh the the uh, the nice ash bar was taking them in okay and then i was just focused on getting out of there yeah which didn't happen did um <clears throat> Did you learn later that Jane passed away due to her injuries from this collision? We did learn that later. My my gut feeling in that was that she had passed. You mean when you went up and saw her? Yes. If you felt she was either dead or close to death? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions for you. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? I do. Whew.
I apologize. I just needed a quick second. some point in uh yeah. your testimony you stated that you heard or rather you saw brake lights would that be fair to say yes i did to the best of your knowledge what would be the only time you would see brake lights on a vehicle uh the point right before gene fell off the hood i think you misunderstood my question if if you were driving a vehicle, the, uh, would it be fair to say that the only time anyone would see brake lights would be if you hit the brake? If the driver hit the brakes, the brake lights would go on on the vehicle. So it would be fair to say that the only way that you would see brake lights would be if the driver of the vehicle hit the brakes. That would be correct. You did state in your testimony that you did not get a look at the driver. Would that be fair to say? That was never part of my testimony. Uh, nobody had asked me that question. Are you asking me that question if I had seen the driver? I do recall you saying that you did not see the driver. So I, I guess that's... In my testimony? Yes. Oh. I He's going to ask you a question, and I'm going to ask that you answer that, okay? Okay. So go ahead and ask your question. Did you at any time see the driver of the vehicle? No. You did testify to uh, when you were describing what you saw, you referred to the driver as he. Any reason why you were referred to the driver as he if you did not see the driver of the vehicle? That would be like the proverbial we. Well, there, there, there's males, there's females. There are singles and there are togethers. I mean, when you say we, it's the proverbial we. So collectively, he would be um, along those lines as well. Is it fair to say that? You could have just answered as we instead of he. Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Next question, sir. Out of grounds on that. It's argumentative. Rephrase your question. Any reason why you would answer that question as he? Objection. Irrelevant. Argumentative. Grounds. grounds. Asked and answered. Sustained. Were you able to get a license plate of the vehicle? Uh, no, I was not. I was uh, focused, like I had said, on the body on the ground. Um, so I did not get the license plate. I'm, I'm... After the vehicle had passed the vehicle that you were in, did you see the vehicle strike anyone after that point? I did not see the vehicle strike anyone after the vehicle had passed me other than driving over like I had stated, the body that it had already <clears throat> struck. Did you observe the vehicle strike anyone while, is it, while it was approaching your position? Uh, clarify your question, please. Did you observe the vehicle strike anyone while, is, while it was approaching your position? Yes, I saw it hit Jane. While it was approaching you? While it was... Coming or up. your vehicle, rather. Yes. Did you observe the vehicle strike anyone else in that moment? 
No, just Jane. And you said you went into a building called the Nice Ash after that moment? That was correct. Do you recall about how long you were in the Nice Ash? Um, hour, hour and a half maybe. Um, I would pop in and out because I was trying to wrap up the float and get us out of there. And then once I was told that I cannot touch my vehicle nor the float anymore because the area was deemed a crime scene, um, we went back in and made a plan on how we were going to get all of us home and then Eat. proceeded to leave. But businesses, I believe, were locked down so no one could get in or out. They were locking their doors. Every time I went out, they were... They would ask me, you know, knock you, on the door, you know, because we're locking it. Do you recall about uh, what time it was at that moment? No, no. These are these are thoughts that you don't think about when you when you've been through something like this. Um, you know, I didn't sit there and note down times. Um, I'm not trained in this. Uh, do you recall if it was? Uh, Still daytime or nighttime at the well, point. the parade the parade started around four four thirty, so it, it gets and it was cloudy, so it was dusk. I mean, city lights were on. Um, emergencies vehicles when they were pulling up, you know, the you could you, you saw you saw the, the the sirens, you know, on the streets. You saw it was dusk. It was would getting. It, dark. Would it be fair to say from the? Uh, Exhibit 46 video that you were shown that it was pretty, pretty clear. Uh, again, wasn't focusing on the, the sky. Do you agree or disagree? The video or the, that you saw was clear. That was the question. The video, the, the clarity of the video or the skies? What's please that, clarify that it was. Pretty much still daytime. You can you can see everything pretty clear. Everything was. You can see yes. It was it was it was clear. It was dusk. Lights were coming on. If um, the city lights, street lights were coming on. Would it be fair to say you can recall lights coming on, but not the driver of the vehicle? I think that's asked and answered, Your Honor. Objection. Grounds. Overruled. He may answer. I can remember lights coming on because they are stationary. The vehicle was traveling past me at a rate of speed with a woman that I thought was my wife on the vehicle. Was not really paying attention to who was driving the vehicle. Again, so would it be fair to say you were paying attention to the lights? No. So what would lead you to believe that they were in fact coming on at that time? Objection. Argument. Grounds. Asked and answered. The video that no, I hold, hold on. I, there's an objection. I have right. to rule on it first. That's okay. The objection is sustained. Next question, sir. Do you recall uh, the duration of time that you saw the brake lights? No, I do not. But you did, in fact, see brake lights? Correct. No further questions. Let me redirect. Yes, briefly. Sir, after you saw brake lights, did you see the... SUV or the red vehicle that you described ever come to a complete stop? No. Objection. Did you? Well, if there's been an objection, it's overruled. <coughs> His answer may stand. Did you at any time see the driver of the vehicle pull over, stop, and get out to investigate what 
he or she had just struck. Objection. Overruled. No. Did you ever see the vehicle come to a complete stop at any time? Objection. Action answered. Sustained. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Statement called to next witness. I see you call Heather Rashadi. Harris? All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Harris, thank you for making your way up to the when you get there, please remain standing, raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Uh, Matthew Harris, uh, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-H-A-R-R-I-S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Mr. Harris, I'm going to draw your attention to November 21st, 2021. Were you at the Walkshire Christmas Parade on that date? I was. Okay. And were you a spectator? Were you a participant? Spectator. Who were you with? Uh, there was a large group of uh, friends and some family in that group. Okay. So did you bring your family? I brought my uh, two daughters. Okay. And was your wife there? My wife was not there. Okay. And how about um, just generally approximately how many people were, were with your group? I think our group had about 19 or 20 between kids and adults. And where were you sitting or standing to view the parade? We were right on the corner of Main Street in Clinton, right in front of uh, the Steaming Cup. I'm going to show you state's exhibit number 51. It's going to display in the front of you on your screen. If you can just let me know when it's displayed in front of you. Yes. Um, does that accurately depict um, the corner that you were at to watch the Christmas parade? It does. I would ask the court to admit it into evidence and to publish it to the jury. What is the of this particular exhibit? Overruled exhibit, I'm sorry, can I have the number again? Is it 30, 51? 51. Exhibit 51 is receipt, permission to publish is granted. Sir, the screen in front of you is a touch uh, screen, so can you kind of put in maybe a circle around the area that the 19 people that you were with kind of encompassed? Pretty much this whole corner. Okay. And were you standing, sitting? Standing. Were, was everyone standing? Everyone was standing. And there's a curb. Were you guys up on the curb and the bump out, or were any of the uh, people that were watching with your group in the street? I th most of the children were sort of in the front area on the curb and out into the street, and most of the adults had sort of huddled behind. Okay. I'm assuming that the purpose is candy <coughs> handed out so the kids got it first? Sure. Okay. Correct. And where were you, if you look at that circle, were you, as we're looking at the diagram, towards the right of that circle, which would be east, or were you to the left of the circle, which would be west? Um, I know I'm drawing on this a lot, of, probably right here in the back, towards right okay. in the middle. And how about your kids? Um, right out here in the front. And were there other people, as you were standing looking at the street, um, which way is the parade coming? Is it coming from, as you're looking at the street, your left down to your right? If Correct. You draw an arrow. Right, right, yeah, sure. Thanks. And what, um, Parthen, what time did you get there, do you know? Uh, we had... Most of us had just come from a soccer game in Brookfield, so I think we got there probably right before it started, 3.45, 3.50. I believe it started at 4. So again, there were, um, were there a lot of people in 
to the right and to the left of you, spectators? It was pretty packed. Okay. Correct. Yep. Thank you. At some point, and we can take this exhibit down, at some point did you hear some type of commotion? I did. Do you know where in the parade route, like what floats had just gone through or what floats were in front of you? Did you? Yeah, I, I, I didn't recall at the, at the time what float was about to come in front of us, but I do know that the dancing grannies had just passed us. Okay. Um, and then that's when I heard the commotion, an audible gasp, uh, there was a large vehicle uh, kind of blocking our view of what was coming, uh, kind of obscured anything, and then that's when I saw a red SUV uh, from the north side come around in front of that vehicle. Uh, it headed straight for that corner where our children were, so it was kind of coming dead on at us. And then at the last second kind of um, clipped that corner and then veered off, and I saw it continue on into the Dancing Grannies group. So as you were looking to your left, which would be, and I'm horrible, horrible at directions, it would be um, to the east. As you were looking there, when you, you said you heard an, a gasp? Yeah, like an audible gasp, commotion, just an in, in eerie sound of not parade sounds, just a, a loud, like draws your attention to something is going on, but we couldn't see because again, there was a large vehicle uh, right there. And I'm assuming the large vehicle that you're describing was part of the parade? Correct. Approximately how far to your left as you're looking at the parade was the vehicle when you first saw it, the red SUV that you've described? <laughs> Hold on, there's been an objection. I was mid question, so if you could just re, uh, re ask it, I didn't sure. know. Approximately how far from your position was the red SUV when you first saw it? Uh, it would have been. Oh, is there, there have been no objection to that, so he may answer. Okay. It would have been on, I believe that's the south side of the street, so um, maybe 30 feet. So you first saw it approximately 30 feet to your left, and it would have been on the opposite side of the road, where then we're from where you were seated. Yeah, just on the other side of the um, the large vehicle, that Suburban that was there. So on the driver's side or the passenger driver's side? Driver's side. Thank you. So the vehicle um, comes on the driver's side of that car that was in the parade. What do you see next? I saw it come along the side of it, and then once it cleared that vehicle, it, it made it a which would have been a right-hand turn right towards our corner. Um, I remember having a split second of what is going on, and then I remember screaming, get back, because all of our children were right there. It came through, it veered off, and I, my immediate thought was he hit something in the front there and then continued off. Um, I would say the parents, mostly the dads, kind of ran up there and kind of check on the children. And I recall at that moment, after a, a second pause, looking down the road to see where it was, where it was going. Um, my immediate thought was to kind of run after it, and then I realized I had an injured child and a three-year-old as well that was there. Um, I saw, I, I distinctly remember seeing two victims laying in the street and then I looked up the other way where I had come and I saw a woman with plaid pajamas lying in the street up the road and that's when I grabbed my my daughter and grabbed her to pull her back. So when you said that you looked to your right and you saw two other people in the roadway were they from your group or were they from a different group? This was after probably three to four seconds in duration, it was advanced up into the, the Dancing Grannies group that had just passed us. Could you tell the path of travel as it, you said it was heading towards your corner and then it veered away, do you recall, can you describe right back, that? Yeah, injury? it came, veered away and then went, headed right back, continued down Main Street, seemingly right down the middle of the road. Okay, and did you see it impact the Grannies? Or I did, did not. Or did you just see bodies after I the car went the, through them? the victims on the ground. Sure, do me a favor. Try to wait until she's fully asked the question. I sure. know it can be a little nerve-wracking, sure. um, just so that the record is clear. You bet. Thank you so much. 
Sir, how old are the children, your children, that were at the parade? My children at the time was seven, and my youngest was three. And they were, you indicated if I can have Exhibit 51 back up? Um, again, if you can put an X approximately where you were standing. I believe I was standing sort of right back, back there a little bit on the sidewalk. Okay, and your seven-year-old was approximately where? And your three-year-old? She had just come back by me a few minutes prior, so she was back by me. She was up on the curb. Correct. And the path of travel, as the vehicle came towards you, can you put an arrow approximately where you think it was veering from and where it was going towards? Overruled. I believe it was coming right at us and then quickly went that way. Okay, thank you. Were you able to estimate how fast the car was going? Faster than normal speed limit on that road, I would say 25 to 30 miles per hour. Okay. Did you hear a horn honking prior to it coming up on your group? I did not. Did the vehicle stop? <clears throat> Strike that. Were any people that were with your group injured? Yes. Who was injured? My daughter, my seven-year-old daughter, uh, had her foot ran over her left foot, uh, broke four toes, and also her tibia and fibula in her leg. And then there was another uh, friend of ours, younger daughter, who was next to her. I believe she got sideswiped from the vehicle with some oh. face damage. Sorry. And what was that? Um, that girl's last name? Nap. K N A P P. Correct. Thank you. And your seven-year-old. What is her name? Brinley. B R I N L E Y. Correct. Okay. Did you? You said that there was something with her tibia and fibula. Fibula. Correct. Fibula. Were they broken they were or? Broken. Yes. Sorry. They okay. Were broken. Sorry. What did you do? Went at, at that moment. Right after the car went past your yep. daughter. So we leaped up. Um, my daughter was crying. Many of the children were crying. It was We were trying to triage through and just seeing who was injured and in because it, it came that close. And again, I had looked down, kind of just assessed the situation a little bit. Um, I had grabbed my daughter, had set her back on the curb a little bit, grabbed my, my oldest daughter, sorry, with the injuries. I grabbed my three-year-old and set them there as well. And then at some point, uh, a few moments later, got them. Uh, the other parents were lining up the children on the side of Clinton Street, on the side of the steaming cup um, over in this area. Um, so we eventually moved the kids back there. Did you take Ridley that evening for medical care? I did not. Okay. Did How did you know that she had broken toes? <laughs> so... Um, there's a couple of variables that came into play there. We did not know at the moment. Um, I knew that she had a, a foot injury and I, I did the typical dad thing and I downplayed the initial injury. Um, I carried her to the car at the, at the time of walking to the car as a, as a leader at pro healthcare where I work, I got an alert that the hospital was on lockdown. So my initial thought was to take her up to the hospital myself. Her acuity versus other victims laying in the road didn't warrant her waiting for an ambulance that I could take her. Um, at that time, when I got the lockdown notice on my phone, I decided to call my wife, who is a nurse practitioner in urgent care at the time, and I said, you know, you, you're going to want to check this out. She was almost done with her shift anyways. We live 15 minutes from the house, so we kind of convened there. She looked at it and decided to take her in at that moment. So what foot was uh, run over? Her left foot. When she, after the car drove over her foot, did she still have her shoe on? She had, uh, no, both shoes had come off um, somehow, but both, we lost one eventually and then the other one, uh, we found one. 
Were you able to look at specifically the left shoe after the car went past? I was. Overruled. You may answer. I, I did see uh, the shoe later on. I think it was the next morning when we kind of had a chance to collect ourselves, and I recall seeing a tread mark across her, her shoes. Would that be consistent with the tire mark? It would be. So the right shoe was unable to be located um, that right. night, correct? Correct. And the left shoe you did find, and that's what you took home with you? Correct. <laughs> Now you said that at the time you didn't feel that your daughter should be taken by ambulance because of what you were seeing. Can you describe to the jury what you were seeing? Just mass chaos, um, nothing like, I, I, I'm, was, I'm a combat veteran, I've been around mass hysteria most of my career and there was I had never seen anything like this in such a safe environment where it was just hysteria, screams, sirens everywhere. Just. And, and unknowing, are there other vehicles coming down? Like, what what is actually going on here? Um, so that's that was it was just an odd, eerie feeling for for a very long period there. And you would indicate you had seen a woman with plaid pants. It seemed like pajama pants. Correct. Okay, to the left of you. Correct. And did you see her being treated? I saw many. Um, individuals standing around her. I know that one of the parents in our group is a uh, physician. I believe she she went on to render aid somewhere. I don't know if it was her or not, um, but I remember seeing a large presence around that woman. And then did you see any bodies to the right of your position? Yes, that's where I saw uh, two within the, with, which would have been part of the, the dancing granny group. I don't know if they were the grannies or not at the time. I just knew that there were two people laying on the ground. So I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 15. And I'm just going to have it viewed in front of you initially. Do you recognize generally um, this map? I do. And do you see the position that you and your family were on November 21st of last year? I do. And do you see your daughter's name um, in a box that's above the word steaming cup? I do. And it's connected to a uh, star that's orange in color? Correct. Is that the approximate location of where you and your family were when your daughter was run over? That is. Was run over? Yes. Um, may I publish it to the jury? It's previously been admitted. You may. <coughs> Again, showing the jury uh, State's Exhibit 15, if you can um, circle the, the orange star that's associated with where your daughter was struck. Thank you. And the approximate location that you observe the woman to your left? Objection. Overruled. You may answer. And to your right. Um, Next, I want to show you what has been before you move on, I just want the record to reflect because it wasn't screen captured that the stars that he circled on exhibit 15. Uh, Actually, sir, before so we can capture it, can you again circle the area where you and your family were? Um, overruled, he may do it again since uh, it was cleared before we captured it. And then the area where you saw um, a body down on the ground to your left? Plaid pants. And that's, you indicate that she had plaid pants, or it was a woman who had plaid pants? Plaid, uh, looked like pajama pants. Okay. Correct. Do you recall what else she was wearing? I don't. Okay. And then to your right. Okay. And that would be the circles, if we can save that um, and mark it as 15. Dang it. Okay. Exhibit B. Thank you. Sorry, 15B. And um, where you marked the circle to your left that was associated with the same place where there's a name Jane Kulik? Yes. Oh, oh, overruled. And where you circle to the right, there are 
seven different names that are dancing grannies. Is that fair? Lee, 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 Lee. Can answer? Yes. Thank you. I'm I never sorry, I didn't hear the last part that you said, Mr. Brooks. Are you withdrawing that? No, I'm not. What did you say then? I said it's, it's pretty obvious from the picture. It, it's leading the witness. All right. Your objections noted. It's overruled. His answers may stand. Thank you. Sir, I'm next going to show you Exhibit 49, which is a video. I'm first going to have it played or put in front of you on your screen. If you can just let me know when you see um, a depiction on that screen. I see it. And um, you saw first couple seconds of that. Let me play it one more time and then ask you if you recognize that. <coughs> okay. I stopped it at three seconds. And do you recognize that area? I do. What is that area? That's the corner right in front of People's Park where we were at the parade. Okay. And you had said, is People's Park across from Steaming Cup? Oh, sorry, Steaming Cup, yeah. People's Park is directly across from Steaming okay. Cup. And that would have been the corner that you were located with your family? On Steaming, at the Steaming Cup corner. Okay. Okay. And do you see yourself depicted in this video? I do. Do you believe it accurately represents um, what you observed that day and what you did? I do. Um, I would ask that um, Exhibit 49 be admitted into evidence and published to the jury. Uh, for the record, how long is the video clip? It is eight seconds. All right, thank you. Exhibit 49 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Thank you. Noted for the record, Your Honor. Okay, if we can play it starting at zero, going through the entire eight seconds. <coughs> Thank you. And you stated that you did see yourself in that video? I did. Going to the initial uh, screen of that video, which would be at zero seconds. Do you see yourself in, it's at zero seconds, do you see yourself in this uh, still frame? Yes. Can you circle, again, using the touch uh, screen, where you are? And are you carrying Brindley? I am. Thank you, you can clear the screen. And next I would like to show just you on exhibit 550. and see if you recognize this intersection as it plays through for approximately five seconds. Do you recognize that as being the intersection you and your family were at? Just forward of our location, yes. So as you're looking at this, would it be, as you're looking at the screen to the left? Yes. Um, sustain this in the form of the question, if you would please rephrase. Where would you and your family have been in relationship to this, where this video was taken? To the left. Okay. And the person taking the video, um, are they on the same side of the street as you are or a different side? Objection. Overruled. You Looks to be the same side as our street. Okay. And you just saw the, the dancing grannies go through? Correct. Does that accurately depict what you observed prior to the car coming through the parade? Yes. Okay. I would ask the court to admit exhibit number 50 and ask that it be published for the jury. Um, your objection is noted. Exhibit 50 is received. Permission to publish is granted. So I'm going to start at zero and just go through uh, the 11 seconds. And I'll ask you questions about the video if you may see. Sir, is that the red SUV that you previously described as hitting your, striking your daughter? It is. And that white vehicle that you saw in that frame, was that the, the vehicle that you saw that was impeding your ability to see it initially, or is that a different vehicle? Objection, you're Overruled, you may answer. I believe that was a different vehicle. Okay. 
And was that the path of travel that you observed that vehicle take, which was on the north side, thank you, um, north side of the street? It is. And then after it passed that intersection, you indicated that it went towards the middle and into the grannies? It fell like that. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. All right, any questions for this witness? Yes. Just one second. What time it was when you observed the uh, the vehicle? I don't recall the specific time I saw it run SUV. No. You stated earlier that you saw the vehicle clip the corner. Would that be fair to say? I saw it clip the the corner of where the children were standing. Correct. And what, what do you mean by clip? Come into contact with children that were in the front of that group of kids. Is that what, how you would define clip? That's my definition of clip, correct. You stated also that it veered quickly away from the uh, I'm guessing that corner. What do you mean by uh, veer quickly away? The vehicle at one point was coming straight at us, and then the next moment it was heading 45 degrees back on the original route, so it quickly turned to get back onto the street. It was, it, otherwise, it would have come onto the corner onto that, that intersection at Clinton Street. So it's fair to say if the vehicle did not quickly veer, as you say, it would have ran right into the people on the corner. That's a fair statement, yes. Is it also a fair statement to assume that the vehicle veered quickly away from that because it didn't want to strike the people on the corner? Objection. Grounds. Speculation. Grounds. Sustained calls for speculation on the part of this witness. In your opinion, why would it, why would the vehicle have quickly veered? Objection. Grounds. Speculation. Grounds. Sustained. Calls for speculation. If you were driving the vehicle and were able at any time to see people directly in your path, would you veer away? Objection relevance for this grounds. trial. Sustained. <coughs> and I had a grounds for the sustain? It's not relevant for this witness to answer that question. It calls for a hypothetical that he has not been qualified to answer. So it's also on foundation grounds. Did you get a look at the driver of the vehicle? I recall looking into uh, the window, but I, my memory doesn't put a face to that or, or an image to that, so no. Did you get a license place number of the vehicle? No. You see any tents on the vehicle that you recall? No, I was not paying attention to the vehicle after it came down barreling up the children. I, my eyes, tunnel vision to the kids. So it would be fair to say that with you focusing on the kids, it would be difficult to describe the vehicle at that point. Outside of it obviously being a red SUV in my mind as I saw it come down, I couldn't recall any other details about the vehicle. So it would be fair to say the only thing you can recall about the vehicle was the color of it? That it was a red SUV, a large, larger vehicle. So the color of it? Correct. 
you stated that you uh, initially waited before you seek medical attention. Any reason why you would wait? I walked through the variables earlier. <clears throat> the hospital was on lockdown. I'm familiar with hospital operations enough to know that the acuity for my daughter didn't warrant me taking resources from other victims. My wife's a, a provider, an urgent care nurse practitioner. Uh, I felt she would be in a better position 15, 20 minutes later to assess and, and handle that from there. Um, you stated you uh, did the father thing, as you put it, and downplayed the significance of the injury. Any reason why you would downplay it? I think my initial reaction was a little confusion of what was going on and not seeing any bones sticking out or any blood. Um, I immediately went into this sort of your okay, meaning compared to everything else I'm seeing around us, you're in an okay position right now to, to get home. So I don't know if it was downplaying the injury per se, um, but it was more of just a, a, a triaging in my own mind of going, it's, it's, it's not that, it's, it's, it's okay. This it would, is, we it would be it. fair to say that the language you used was you downplayed the injury. Would correct. that be fair yep. to say? Yep, that's correct. After the vehicle passed you, did you observe anyone being struck? No. Before the vehicle approached, did you observe anyone being struck? Yes. You also stated that at one point, after you were observing the path of travel of the vehicle that it felt like it was um, straightening up into the middle of the parade route. Would that be fair to say? Yes. What do you mean by it felt that way? Maybe in an in a incorrect term on my part. My memory, my recollection of the memory was that it, when it veered off, it went on and continued down the middle of Main Street. So would it be fair to say that you really don't recall? You know, I certainly recall the vehicle heading back down Main Street, down the middle of Main Street. I'm, I'm referring to you saying that it, uh, what it felt like as, as opposed to what you recall it doing. I, I use the incorrect term there. When I said felt, it was more of a, the word choice of recall I should have used. And you stated that uh, you would estimate the speed of the vehicle to be about 25 miles an hour? I said 25 to 30 miles per hour. So somewhere in between that? Correct. And you also stated that it was uh, the vehicle was about 30 feet away from you? When I first initially saw the video, was, or, uh, the vehicle was 30 feet away. It was just on the other side of the vehicle, the, the large suburban vehicle. So how, how could you come to the determination of the speed? Because it was barreling right at us. So as it came around the vehicle, started coming towards us, it felt like 25 to 30 miles per hour, and then as it veered off, no brake lights, just veered off and continued right down Main Street at that rate so, of speed. So it felt like that was the speed. Is the terms you just used again, felt. It felt like it was going that speed. So I'm using the term felt, and I am defining that as sort of a mental re recollection or a gut feel. <coughs> I'm not trained in assessing speed, so my gut feel, what I felt at that time driving that street numerous times is that it was going 25 to 30 miles per hour. So would it be fair to say, based on what you just said, that you're not trained in speed analyzation that would Attention. it be fair would it be fair to say that you don't know exactly the speed of the vehicle? Objection. 
grounds. Um, That's based on what he said. Hold on, you asked multiple questions, so I'm going off of the very last question that you asked, and that is, would it be fair to say that you don't know the speed of the vehicle? To that question, the objection's overruled and the witness may answer. Yes, without looking at a, a speedometer, I would have no way of knowing exactly how fast that vehicle is going. Did you notice any damage to the vehicle at that point that it passed you? I don't recall honing in on that level of detail on the vehicle, so I don't recall. Do you recall if you may have seen anyone else present in the vehicle? I don't recall. Did you ever make any statements to law enforcement after the incident at any time? We had, my wife and I both shared information um, on behalf of the, the, the crash report in our findings, or our um, initial statement. You recall uh, if that was the same night of the incident or in the following days after? That was the following days. Do you recall if it was a few days after or maybe a week or two? Uh, I don't recall specifically. Um, I believe probably within a week or so. Any idea uh, why it took so long for you to give a report? You and your wife, rather, to give a report? Yeah, just uh, dealing with my daughter and getting her situated and just the magnitude of uh, the incident, I think it took them a little bit longer. I think we were in contact pretty quickly, but it just took a while for them to, to get the resources back to us to collect everything. Did you initially uh, uh, initiate the contact which attempting to file a report? can't recall specifically, it's been close to a year, uh, but I believe we did reach out to the DA's office at some point in the following days. Did you do any follow-up after that initial contact to see if maybe your report had been filed or, or anything like that? At that point, the DA's office stayed in contact with us to let us know that everything they needed had been captured. Do you recall who you talked to from the DA's office? I don't. I don't recall. Do you recall if, or do you recall being told that you may be called to testify in this matter? I do. Were you seeking to testify in this matter? I know I was subpoenaed directly from the, to the state, the DA's office. So you didn't have any uh, intention to testify in this matter before being subpoenaed? I knew it was a possibility. I never reached out to request to testify. I, I let them do their job and they reached out to me to let me know that uh, I would um, get subpoenaed. Have you read or seen any complaint in this matter? Objection Grounds? Sustained. Have you or your wife filed any claims in this matter? Which claim? Define claims. Um, referring to being an injured party or anything of that nature? We submitted um, a claim with the DA's office, I believe, for potential medical uh, reimbursement. So that would be in regards to the medical bills? For my daughter, correct. So would it be fair to say that you have a financial interest in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Would you consider yourself to be an injured party in this matter? Me personally, no. Not physically. So you weren't injured in any way in this? Not physically injured, no.
Are you aware of the plaintiff in this matter? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Ever had any contact with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Vague. Sustained. Ever had any phone conversations or uh, personal interactions with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Again, with regard to the nature of the question, it's vague. Sustained. Vague. I don't believe that's vague, Your Honor. I asked specifically if there were any phone <coughs> conversations or personal interactions. I don't think that's vague. I think that's pretty clear. Sustained. And I, I also believe the jury deserves to know if there is a plaintiff in this matter. Your objections noted it's to that particular statement. Your statement is noted. To the objection from the state, it is sustained. Next question, please. Are you aware if there even is a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. May I have the grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Relevant. Uh, I would object and say that it's very relevant. Again, citing Your that. Your objection is noted. Next question, please. Were you ever contacted by anyone who identified as the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Still vague. That's, that's pretty clear, Your Honor. We, the jury deserves to know this information. Mr. Brooks, the objection has been sustained. Next question, please. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Briefly. Sir, at cross-examination, you would had testified that you did not see any brake lights. Is that correct? That's correct. Objection. Ground. Relevancy. Overruled. Sorry, correct, yes. Okay. You testified further on cross-examination that you observed the, the red SUV strike an individual to your left. Is that correct? Objection. Uh, he also stated that he was focused on his children and not focused on... That's an argumentative the, statement. What's the legal basis for your objection, Mr. Brooks? That is hearsay. Overruled. I did not see the individual to my left get hit. I just saw her on the ground, or the victim on the ground. After you saw her on the ground, did the red SUV stop? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. You may answer. I did not see the red SUV from that duration of the parade. I didn't see the red SUV until he, the vehicle had already passed that position and came around the other large SUV. So I can't speak to what happened back there. Was there anything that you could see in the roadway that would have prevented that red SUV from stopping before it started veering towards your group? Objection. Hearsay. You didn't see. You uh, couldn't the objection see to hearsay is noted. It's overruled. <coughs> you may answer. Can you ask the question again, please? Certainly. Did you see anything in front of you that would have prevented the red SUV from stopping as it passed that car um, that obstructed that car that obstructed your view initially. Objection. Irrelevancy. Overruled. You may answer. Nothing that I saw would have stopped him. That wouldn't have allowed him to stop. Okay. And after he um, impacted your group that was watching the parade and it continued on towards the dancing grannies, was there anything that you could see that would have stopped the red SUV? Objection. Uh, who who is the he you're referring to? Um, I don't understand the objection. Um, were you done asking your question? I was. Um, overruled, you may answer. I don't uh, consent to being called he. We don't even know the he that's being referred to. Overruled. The witness didn't identify a he. Overruled. I, I don't recall seeing anything in the road that would have stopped him from stopping, prevented him from stopping. Thank you. Nothing further. All right. Thank you. You may step down. This will be an excellent point to take our mid- Morning break.
Uh, we'll be in recess for about 15 minutes. All rise for the jury, please. We are in recess. We'll be back in about 15 minutes.
All right, we are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before. Um, Madam Clerk, have the jury come out, and the state should be ready to call its next witness. Deal appearing by a third party for my client in this matter. as a living human being. I also would like for the record to address subject matter jurisdiction again, Your Honor, if you would like to answer that now. No, I would not and will not. Is that a judiciary determination? The record stands. I've previously addressed that issue. So you will not be answering that? All right, the record should reflect the jury is coming in. Is that a tacit agreement again, Your Honor? I'm not answering that. So is that a yes or no? I'll take that as a yes for the record, Your Honor. That's not either, sir. I'm not answering that. You didn't reply. Remember, non-response is consent. All right, thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement called to next witness. The state would call Heather Rashadi. All right, good morning. Ms. Rashadi, if you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Heather Rashadi, H-E-A-T-H-E-R-R-I-C-C-I-O-T-T-I. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Ms. Rashadi, I want to direct your attention to November 21st of last year. Were you at the Christmas parade held on Main Street in the city of Waukesha? I was. Who were you there with? I was there with my three children. How old are they? At the time, they would have been seven, five, and not quite two. Do you recall where you were seated or standing? We were on the corner by the steaming cup. I'm going to ask that Exhibit 51, which was previously admitted into evidence, be published to the jury. Permission granted. Ma'am, do you see the area highlighted on the screen in front of you? Actually, on the table right in front of you. Sorry. Yes. Okay. And does that look familiar as the steaming cup? Yes. We were on the paver portion of the corner there. Can you circle or put an X in the area that you and your three kids are at, approximately? Sure. Just a touch screen. Okay. So I would have been a little bit further back from my kids, maybe like over here. And my kids, my two older kids, they were in the street right about there. Okay. And at some point, were you standing, I'm sorry? I was standing, and my youngest was in a stroller with me. And the other two kids, were they in the street? Yeah, they were with the other kids that were just waiting for candy from the floats. Were their kids on your right side as you were watching the parade? They were kind of just in front of me a little to the side, though, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Was that the approximate area that your kids were standing? Even out probably a little bit further than where, probably a little bit further than where I circled. Did anyone raise a concern about where they were standing at some point during the parade? There was concern about it. A police officer had come by and actually moved all the kids back a little bit. And there was another mom there, and her daughter was near my kids. And she had actually said to me, gosh, they're out a little bit far. And I said, everything's going so slow, they're not going to get hit. They'll be fine. So at some point during the parade, 
Was your attention diverted from what was the floats and the participants and the spectators to something else? Something Was your attention drawn away? Yeah, there was one point when there was a break in the actual parade and um, a, an SUV came um, down the road and it was coming faster than any parade float should have been coming, so it was um, confusing and I didn't, I didn't know what was happening at the time, but um, it did veer into the crowd um, just right in front of me where my son got hit. Okay. So first of all, can you draw an arrow on the direction that the, the vehicle was going? Sure. It was coming from this way. Okay. And what direction, if you can kind of follow that line, what direction was it going as you said it veered towards you? It wasn't going straight. It was just kind of like, and then it just kind of went in this way and ended up right about there. Okay. Were any of your kids, um, one was in a stroller that was by you mm -hmm. up on the, the ledge, I think, or the... Yeah, far curb. back, further back. Um, were either of your other two kids struck by the SUV? My middle son, Owen, was struck by the SUV. Um, when when it when it came through. And Owen is seven. He was five at the time. He's six now. Oh, I'm sorry. That's exactly. He's the middle one. I was just testing you to make sure that you knew the age. It's hard to keep kids. them straight, but I sometimes do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, did you see the path of tra travel after the SUV went came towards you and hit Owen? I didn't because I gathered up my kids as soon as I as fast as I could and we just we had parked um, in the public lot down down here and so I just gathered them up as soon as I as fast as I could and we just ran to the car and <coughs> to get out of there there was a lot of chaos and screaming and crying and did you um, what injuries did Owen receive um, he ended up needing six stitches um, he had a gash on his eye, above his eye, like in his eyebrow. Um, so we needed six stitches because it was pretty deep. They couldn't just glue it or anything like that. Now you put your hand <laughs> above your right eyebrow. Was it above his right eyebrow? Um, yeah. Okay. And um, where were the kids facing, if you recall, um, right before the SUV came and struck Owen? They were waiting for the next float, so he was turned facing the way the floats were coming because there wasn't anything going on at the time. We were just waiting for the next thing, so they were just watching for the next float to come by. Okay. So I'm assuming he was, his so he body? Was, yeah, yeah, he was turned. Okay, thank you. Did you get medical attention right away? Um, I dropped my youngest and my oldest off at home, and then I quickly took Owen to Waukesha Memorial. And that's where he was treated? That's where he was treated. Did you see, first of all, what color was the SUV? It was a maroonish red. Okay. Did you notice anything distinctive about it other than it was a maroonish red SUV? No. Did you see the vehicle prior to it striking Owen strike anyone? I didn't. Did you see the vehicle strike anyone after it struck Owen? I didn't. Nothing further. Oh, sorry. Nope. We'd ask that a screenshot be taken of State's Exhibit 51. I believe that would be 51A. And we'd ask that it be admitted into evidence. <laughs> My objection was to clarification on whether she was done or not. Uh, I believe it is 51A. It is also captured and to use that one in to evidence. Thank you. Sorry, did you move 51A? I did. All right, and 51A is also received. And the state would have no other questions for this witness. Thank you. Any questions, sir? Yes. Um, you stated a few minutes ago that um, at one point before 
uh, the vehicle came through that um, you were having a conversation to the effect of things were going slow, they're not going to get hit. I never said I was having a conversation. Well, let me back up. Who are you? Who were you talking to when you said everything's going slow, pretty slow, they're not going to get hit? Another mom. So would it be fair to say that's a conversation? Yes. And why did you make reference to getting <laughs> hit at that point? Because I didn't expect my kid to get hit at a parade. So you had already made the determination that they were going to get hit at a parade at that point? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative sustained. You do not have to answer that question. Why would getting hit be in your head at that point? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Overruled. She may answer the question. I wasn't concerned about my children being hit at a parade because typically at a parade floats are going very slow. That still doesn't quite answer the question because the statement was things are going pretty slow, they won't get hit. What, what prompted the statement they won't get hit at that point? Another mom was concerned about how much into the street the kids were waiting for candy. So it'd be fair to say that the initial concern was from another parent? Correct. And not yourself? I wasn't worried about my kids getting hit at a parade as I shouldn't have been. You stated also that you dropped your other kids off before seeking medical attention. Would that be fair to say? I said that. <coughs> Any reason why you didn't seek medical attention immediately? I did seek medical attention immediately. You also just stated that you dropped your other kids off. And my then... house is on the way to the hospital, so I dropped two of my children off so they wouldn't have to sit at the <coughs> hospital. So your attention at that point was to seek medical attention? I sought medical attention. Was yes. that your intent? That's what I did. Was it your intent? Objection, I Sustained. Asked an answer. Do you recall about what time you arrived at uh, the parade? No. You recall what time you left the parade? No. Were you at the parade with anyone other than your children at that time? No. Before you were able to see the vehicle that struck your son, or was it your son? Yes. Before you saw the vehicle, did you observe anyone else struck before no. that moment? No. After that moment? No. About how long did it take you to gather your children up before? Not very long. <clears throat> Do 
Do you recall how long you were treated uh, at the hospital? It, I don't know. We were there for a while waiting. The waiting room was full of people that were hurt. Were you ever told at any point during your, your waiting process that you probably could have went to another medical f uh, facility? Objection. No. Rounds. Sustained. statement to law enforcement? Yes. Do you recall if it was the same night of the incident? I gave a report the night of the <clears throat> incident at the hospital. And did you follow up on that report at any time? No, I didn't. Any reason why? I'm, why would I follow up? <laughs> well, it would be fair to say uh, would it not that after making a report to law enforcement, you would want to follow up maybe to see what's going to be done about the report? Would that be fair to say? I knew that the police were going to do their jobs, so I didn't have a reason to follow up. They contacted me when they needed to contact me. <coughs> so it would be fair to say you just gave the report and then just left the, the rest up to law enforcement? Sure. And I'm assuming that law enforcement at some point got back in touch with you. Would that be fair to say? Correct. <coughs> Do you recall about when that was? Either the next day or the day after. Do you recall uh, if it was a detective or a regular officer? I believe it was a detective. Do you recall the name of the detective? No. Were you at any time given a card by the detective to be able to keep in contact? I don't recall. Do you recall if your interview was uh, written down as a summary or if it was recorded? I think he did both. Did you file any claims related to this matter? No. Ever read or saw a complaint in this matter? No. Grounds? Sustained. Let me rephrase if you want, but it's sustained as to the form of the question. Whom were you contacted by in regards to testi possibly testifying in this matter? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Probably the DA's office. I don't know. Were you subpoenaed? I was subpoenaed to be here. Do you recall who that subpoena was from? I don't know. So it would be fair to say that you received a subpoena and never read who it was from. Would that be fair to say? From the state of Wisconsin. When you say the state of Wisconsin, who are you referring to? Objection relevance. Grounds? Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? Not relevant. Will you consider yourself an injured party in this matter? I was not physically injured myself. Have you filed a claim in this matter in any way? Yes, the answer. Sustained. Would you consider yourself to be the plaintiff in this matter? Objection relevance. Grounds. 
Sustained. Allows for the sustain? Not relevant. Also under 906.11. Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained on relevance grounds. Ever had a conversation with the plaintiff at any time in this matter? Objection relevance. Grounds? Sustained as to the form of the question. Uh, you may rephrase it if you would like. <coughs> Some more specificity. Have you ever had any phone conversations or personal interactions with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection vague. Grounds? Sustained as to the form of a question. You may rephrase it if you so choose with more specificity so that it's not vague. Are you aware of the identity of the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Not relevant. Grounds? It's not relevant. It's the same. Are you aware if there is a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Grounds? Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? On relevance grounds. Also under 90611. Uh, with all respect, Your Honor, the jury deserves to, to know this information. We're withholding important information from the jury. They deserve to know this. The jury will disregard the statement made by Mr. Brooks as not being an accurate statement of the law. Next question. So to the best of your knowledge, you, you're not aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Mr. Brooks, please move on to another topic under 90611. You are hereby advised that if you do not move on to a new topic, I will close the cross-examination. With all due respect, Your Honor, this is important information the jury deserves to know. Mr. Brooks, ask a relevant question, please. That holds a lot of relevance, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Brooks, one last opportunity to ask a question. Otherwise, uh, the court will declare your, the cross-examination closed under 906.11. No further questions. Can you redirect? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Statement called to next witness. Daniel Knapp. All right, Mr. Knapp, if you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right, up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. And my clerk, Teresa, who's to my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask that you do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Uh, Daniel Knapp, D-A-N-I-E-L, Knapp, K-N-A-P-P. -P. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I can direct your attention to November 21st of 2021. Were you at the Waukesha Christmas Parade on that date? I was. Who were you with? Uh, I was with my family, my wife, and three children as well as uh, three other families. There's a group of 19 of us. Okay. And by chance, were you with um, I'm sorry, Laura. Yes. yes, thank you. Um, Ben Harris? Yes. And did Matt have his job? Overruled, sir. Um, the question and answer will stand. Sir, how old are you kids? Um, my kids at the time of the parade were 11, 7, and 3. <coughs> Where were you seated during, for the parade? The, my family was in front of the steaming cup, so that would be on the northeast corner of Main and Clinton Street. And I, I said seated, but I guess were you standing or where were you on that corner? Yeah, so um, I was behind my um, the group of uh, we had twelve children that were lined up um, <laughs> a, across the street or on the side of the street uh, waiting to receive candy. I was behind uh, the children, um, so closer to the steaming cup. 
was that the same general location as the other parents? That is correct, yes. Uh, my, my wife, Stephanie, um, was with my daughter, Kelsey, going in and out of the steaming cup, uh, given it was a little chilly that day, and uh, my, my daughter was a little cold, so she would go in and out of the steaming cup. So she was a little further to the um, west than I was, but we were all in the general direction. Okay. And how old is Kelsey? Uh, Kelsey, at the time of the incident, is, was three. Uh, today, she's four. Now, at some point, did you hear anything unusual during the parade? Yeah, so um, in, in watching the parade, um, you know, the, a lot of circumstance pomp, uh, bands and, and uh, noises. Um, but then uh, all of a sudden, um, the noises changed um, uh, to, to what I would describe as um, s uh, sounds of screaming. Um, and at the time when that occurred, um, the direction kind of turned from facing the parade down to the east, looking down Main Street. So is your face of the parade, would east be to your left? To um, your that right? is correct, okay. to my left. So to your left. And when you said screaming, you said this is a parade, I'm assuming that there are kids and adults screaming and yelling. What was different about the screaming that you heard? Um, in, in my recollection, there is a difference between laughing um, and, and having a, a, a joyful time um, as compo uh, compared to screaming out of fear, terror. Um, it was just uh, a, a noticeable difference. And the screaming that you heard out of fear or terror, that was the screaming that you heard when you looked left? That is correct. Okay. What did you see? <clears throat> So um, what I saw when I, when I looked left um, was um, there was a, a SUV uh, pulling a float that was down um, to our left side that had not got to the position that we were at. And uh, all of a sudden a car, a uh, red SUV, um, <coughs> pulled around that float and came headed directly in, um, in our direction. You said a red SUV. Did you notice anything unusual about it as the car came at you? Um, other than um, obviously a, a car coming at us during a parade was something that was very unexpected. Um, and a, as it got closer, as I mentioned, um, it was coming at a um, maybe a northwest direction um, as it past the SUV coming directly um, at our location. And um, um, in terms of anything else um, at that point, no. Okay. I'm gonna show and ask the court to publish Exhibit 51. It will show up in front of your screen. Go ahead. First of all, sir, is this, um, does this area look familiar to you? It does. And where's the steaming cup? The steaming cup would be the building I'm circling right now. Yep. Okay. And where were you seated or standing approximately? Yeah, so um, I was standing somewhere right about here. Okay. And where was, were your kids? So we had, like I mentioned before, a group of 12 that were lined up. Um, Kelsey would have been the furthest to the west, and I would approximate that um, the, the 12th child for this to the east would have been somewhere in this direction okay. or location excuse me and you know approximately um, that would have been the location she would have been on the curb meaning Kelsey or would she have been in off the curb if you recall it's my recollection that she would have been off the curb um, there was a lot of excitement at, um, with the children and um, there was a um, a police officer that would often push the children back to ensure that they were staying out of the direction of the parade and so um, it, it's my recollection that they would have been on the street at that time. Okay. And still using Exhibit 51, when you st state that this red SUV was coming at your group, can you, and I don't know if you can, can you show the direction of travel using this uh, exhibit? Overruled. You may answer. Thank you. Um, I would, uh, the direction I would um, 
based on my recollection was coming here and again right at our location so coming here and then would have come back this direction into the middle of the street ok so let's kind of go through that when you first saw the car was it on can you show by an arrow using exhibit 51 can you show um, by arrow the um, I think you actually have the direction that the parade was going you did with the arrow that you previously pointed is that yeah you? the direction of the parade uh, was coming <coughs> in this direction here and where specifically was the car coming from was it coming from as you're looking at the car was it coming from the left side of the road or the right side of the road overruled the car was coming from the south side of Main Street. Um, Which is, it had, you're on the north side? I'm on the north side okay. by Steeman Cup, so it had passed um, the, the SUV on the south side and then came into our purview at that point, um, coming on a northwest direction towards us. So the red SUV passed another SUV? That's that's correct. It had passed an SUV that had yet to pa had yet to come to our location. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure what um, unit that was in the parade, but as it passed that SUV, it came into our or it came into excuse me my uh, purview, and that's the the when I got sight of the vehicle. So the SUV that the red SUV passed, it would have passed the red SUV would have passed the other SUV on the driver's side. That is correct. Okay. Um, if I could have a screen capture of this, I believe it would be 51B. Um, it is it's captured, and we'll save it as 51B. <coughs> I'd also ask. Hold on. I'm sorry, was there an objection? Yes. Um, the basis for the objection? Uh, relevancy. It is relevant. Uh, 51B has been captured, and I believe you had a statement about it. Yes, I'd ask that it be moved into evidence. It is received. 51B. Objection noted for the record, Your Honor. It already has been. It yes, it will be noted. Sir, continuing to look at 51, you had stated that the the direction of travel then was towards the middle of of Main Street. Is that correct? That is correct. Could you see what it was going towards? So um, at the time of when that vehicle was coming towards our group, myself in particular, um, I, I saw the driver of that SUV coming right towards me and then start making a little uh, bit of that, um, I guess turning up instead of the northwest direction toward more to the west. And at that time, um, my, my concern at, after looking at this vehicle was realizing that he was heading directly for our children. Um, and um, as the vehicle passed myself um, and um, getting to the end of our group, which again, Kelsey was furthest on the west, and um, right next to Kelsey would have been um, a, a family friend, Brinley Harris, and um, I saw the vehicle strike my daughter. Um, my daughter flew approximately 15 feet um, towards the middle of the intersection of Clinton and Maine. So at that point, um, a fatherly instinct kicked in and my, um, my sole focus was at my daughter at that point. So I did not um, have any contact, uh, visual contact with the vehicle after that point. So you said Kelsey flew approximately 15 feet into Clinton Street? In, in estimation. Um, I, um, your objection is noted. <coughs> what was the objection? That that was already answered. Uh, that's not my recollection. So it's overruled. I believe she was seeking clarification or additional details. Can that be clarified? I'm making um, the question. No, go ahead and ask your question, uh, Attorney Basie. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? Go ahead, Attorney Basie. So, from your, what did you do upon seeing that? 
So after um, seeing my daughter get hit um, as the vehicle was turning uh, again in, into the uh, parade route, um, noticing my daughter was hit by the right front right side of the um, vehicle, um, and uh, watching my daughter and, and where she ended up was my sole focus. I ran over to her um, to check on the condition she was in. So you actually saw the red SUV's front right bumper strike your daughter? That's correct. Okay, and that's what ca caused her to be propelled into approximately 15 feet away? That's correct. What did you notice once you got to your daughter? Um, I noticed my daughter had uh, a, a significant amount of blood um, on her face. Um, she was conscious, but um, I would consider it a look of... Um, a, a, no, mind you, she's three year old, three years old. A look of um, just complete fear and misunderstanding, just not understanding what what just occurred. What did you do? So I uh, I picked up my daughter, um, and not knowing exactly the situation that we were currently involved in, not knowing if there was another vehicle, um, just not really understanding the situation. I picked her up and I ran. Um, north on Clinton Street for about 10 yards. I stopped at that moment. I turned back towards Main Street to make eye contact with my wife um, um, and the rest of the group to ensure that um, the rest of the group was safe and uh, just to get a, just a bearing of, of where we were um, after making eye contact with my wife and um, asking the question, is everyone else safe? Um, I proceeded to run with Kelsey in my arms. We were parked at um, Waukesha State Bank, which um, I, I grew up in Waukesha, so um, thankfully I'm very familiar um, with the surroundings in this general area, and I knew how close I was to the hospital. Um, I ran with Kelsey. Um, my brother-in-law caught up with me and came with me um, as we drove um, up to Waukesha Memorial Hospital and brought Kelsey into the hospital. What injuries did Kelsey receive as a result of being struck by the red SUV? So um, Kelsey uh, received a, a tear in her spleen um, in this location. Um, and for the record, I just want to show that you pointed to the left side. Correct. Of uh, back left back. side of um, Kelsey. Okay. Um, she received a, a <coughs> broken nose. Um, significant road rash and cuts to her facial area, um, which um, one of them required um, some uh, facial surgery. Prior to the vehicle striking Kelsey, um, when you first saw the vehicle, did you hear it honking its horn? I did not. You stated that the vehicle was coming right at you. Did you, were you able to see inside the vehicle? I was. How many people were inside that vehicle? I could only see one person in the vehicle. Presumably the driver? Yes, it was on the driver's side, front driver's side. Could you tell male or female? Yes, it was a black male. And at the time, I, the eyes is what drew me in, were, were completely wide open and um, made eye contact with, with the individual driving the vehicle. So you looked eye to eye with the person who hit your, your dog? <laughs> I did. Do you see him in the courtroom today? I do. Can you point him out by where he's seated and what he's wearing? He's and seated in... I ask that Mr. Brooks take off his face mask. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. He is seated at the table um, located over here. He's got a gray suit on, a blue shirt, and a tie. Let the record reflect that witness has identified the defendant, Daryl Brooks. Objection. I do not consent to being called that name, nor do I know any individual by that name, Your Honor. The record will reflect that the witness has identified uh, the defendant as the driver of the SUV that struck his daughter. May my objection be noted for the record as well, Your Honor? It's noted. Did, from your observations, um, you didn't see anyone else in the car, correct? I did not. Did, um, the, did the defendant, um, was he flailing his arms? Do you recall where his hands were? 
I do not recall any hand movement. Um, my main recollection is the face, <coughs> specifically the eyes. Do you appear to be in control of the car? Yes. Did the vehicle stop after hitting your daughter? The vehicle did not stop after hitting my daughter, although, as I stated before, I, I do not have recollection of exactly where, where the vehicle went, other than getting back towards the center of Main Street. As the car was coming towards your location, could you estimate the speed? I, I have um, no way of estimating the exact speed, but I would say way too fast for the situation. So you indicate that you were friends with um, <coughs> Matt Harris and his family? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. To this particular witness. Overruled because the context Rouse. and Rouse. background. Grounds for that. Context and background. It's also relevant. Go ahead. You may answer. That's correct. We are. And you say that Brindley was um, standing near Kelsey when Kelsey got hit? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Brindley was standing um, directly to Kelsey's left, um, so uh, to her east. And did you see Brindley after November 21st? I Yes, I've seen Brindley after November 21st. Shortly after November 21st of last year? Overruled. Yes. Did she have any type of um, medical um, dressing on her at that time? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Overruled. Relevant. Yes, she had a full cast on. Her leg? Yes, or her leg. leg. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any cross, Mr. Brooks? Yes. Uh, you may claim that you locked eyes with the driver of the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. And approximately how far was the vehicle from you when you supposedly locked eyes? I would estimate it um, 20 feet. Would it be fair to say that that's about as far as I am from you now, or were you, or was the vehicle further than where I am now from you? I would, I would state that um, it was probably a little bit closer. And what do you mean by a little bit closer? Um, I would say perhaps halfway, uh, maybe. Th three quarters of the way between where you're seated right now and where I'm seated right now. What, what would be three quarters of the way? Can you, uh, can you like point about where? Again, I estimated at about 20 feet, so. Uh, would it be fair to say that halfway between you and I would not be an accurate uh, statement of 20 feet? Objection, Grounds. Overruled. He may he may answer the question. Uh, that's why I say that it was about three quarters of the way. <coughs> so about about what spot would it be by this black? Uh, I guess I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's a door. It's an electrical or, box. Uh, excuse me. What is that? It's an electrical box. Uh, electro. Would it be by this electrical box? Would it be this square directly next to the? Uh, Electrical box. I mean, what specifically? What would you say would be three fourths of the way? So, the electrical box would be a, a good estimation of the distance. However, it was a little further um, to my left than where the electrical box was because it was coming at us at more. So, it would be it would be a little further this way, towards coming back towards the table here. Your Honor, I just ask that the defendants allow the witness to answer the question before he asks the next question. And I agree. 
The record should also reflect that as the witness was answering the question, he was motioning with his uh, left <coughs> arm in a direction outstretched kind of from front of his body to the left of his body, probably at a 45 degree angle to demonstrate that his observation of the vehicle was in that direction. Um, you may ask the question again then so the witness can answer from there. So you would estimate that it was in relation to where the electrical box is, probably approximately around like this general area right here? To my direction, probably a little bit to the left of there. Just so the record is clear, Mr. Brooks is standing up at his table. He's pointing um, what would be pretty much directly in front of him, but uh, to my left of the uh, electrical box. Um, we have large squares of carpet. It would be a square and a half to the left, my left, Mr. Brooks' right. For the record, I'm a third party, Your Honor. I don't like that stated for the record. I don't identify by that name or consent to being called that name, Your Honor. Your lack of consent is noted. Next um, question, please. Your Honor, just for the record, I don't think some of the jurors in the back can see the black electrical box. Right. How do we have our just stand for a moment? And so that we can be clear that they're seeing that. Thank you. So the record should reflect that the jurors are all standing to take a look at where the electrical box is and, of course, the squares of carpet next to that. All right, thank you. You may be seated. Next question, sir. And you would say from that general distance you were able to clearly lock eyes with a vehicle that was passing you at a speed that you say was too fast? As I stated before, the vehicle was not necessarily passing me, it was coming straight at me. And yes, I was able to lock eyes. And do you recall if the vehicle had any tint? I do not, excuse me, I do not recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows. I assume, is that what you're referring to? Yes, tint, yes. I do not recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows. Were you able to, you, you clearly uh, were able to make the color of the vehicle, would that be fair to say? That is correct. And were you able to make out the make and model of the vehicle? I was not. And were you able to see if there were any occupants in the vehicle other than the driver? I only saw one occupant in the vehicle. Did you get a license plate of the vehicle? I did not get a license plate for the vehicle. Do you recall what the driver was wearing? I do not recall what the driver was wearing. So it would be fair to say that all you looked at was the eyes then and not the entire face. I saw the face of the occupant, the driver of the vehicle. I did not see pants or make out any shirt or jacket or any other markings. I didn't ask about pants, but... Um, the witness answered your question. Next question, sir. Um, I would like to get to it, Your Honor. Um, Did you observe the vehicle strike anyone while it was coming towards you? I didn't. I did not. After it had passed you? Yes, I observed the vehicle striking my three-year-old daughter, Kelsey. After that point? I did not. Um, you stated that when the vehicle was coming towards you, it turned away? It was turning away? Yes, as the vehicle was coming directly towards our group, it did make a turn um, from a northwest direction to a westerly direction down Main Street. Would it be fair to say that that direction that it turned was turning away from you? 
Correct. It was turning towards the middle of the street. But generally turning away from the area that you and your children were standing at that at that point in time. Correct. From your uh, observation, from your observation, why do you think the vehicle would have been turning away from you? Objection. Grounds. Calls for speculation. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Were you injured in any way? I was not physically injured. And would you, would it be fair to say that you would describe the scene as pretty chaotic at that point? Absolutely. And you, Mr. Brooks, sorry to interrupt. How much longer do you have? The I, only I, reason I ask is there's some weather coming in, and I've had some alerts, and I want to make sure everyone gets to a safe <coughs> location. There is a tornado warning, not for us just yet, but um, so I'm. I'll let you finish, um, but I may be interrupting if another alert comes in. Are they going? All right, we're going to take we're going to take our lunch early then, and uh, I'll rise for the jury. Sorry for the interruption, Mr. Brooks. Well, you will. You will.
One, it is 1243. Um, I do have the parties in the courtroom. Appearances are as they were before. And now we can all hear better because the audio is turned on. Um, the record should reflect that when we last broke, uh, the court had received information regarding nearby tornado warnings. Ultimately, there were a number of warnings that were issued, some of which affected uh, the immediate area. Um, our alert system ultimately went off with the lights uh, and the audible voice telling everyone to take shelter. Um, and it has been lifted and it was lifted just a short time ago and I had the parties brought back into the uh, courtroom. I know when we broke on its unexpectedly, um, it was during the uh, cross-examination uh, for, I believe, Mr. Knapp. And I... My thoughts are as follows, is to have Mr. Knapp come back in, I presume he's available, um, and finish his cross-examination. And then frankly, given the severity of the weather that went through, including near my house, and I need to check on my house, um, is to break for the day. So I know there's jurors who live in the area, potentially, where some of these things happened. I don't wanna question everyone about you know, whether they have power or whether they don't have power. I just think given the gravity of this case and the weather system that went through, I wanna make sure people um, are giving their full attention. Um, and I would like to then um, break for the day and then resume tomorrow morning. So that's my plan, um, as is my practice, though I will give the parties an opportunity to indicate whether they think differently, but that's what I'd like to do from the state. I understand and I certainly respect the court's concern for uh, the jurors and their, their property and their families. Um, I it's not just I, the jurors, let me just say. There's a, this, obviously, there's a lot of folks that are here attending. My, just what I was following in terms of the weather, it's pretty widespread. There were, there were things that happened more south of here. There were things that happened north and west of here. Um, there's people from all over, and I just think it would be wise to let everyone break for the day and then you know, check on their things and make sure that there are things that they don't need to attend to or attend to as the case may be. So go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Sure. No, I, and I understand that, Judge. I, I don't have an argument with that. I just, you know, we obviously have a full slate of witnesses here to go this afternoon. Some have traveled from, like, the Cudahy area or... Uh, you know, some distance, not unavoidable, but um, my only other suggestion would be to maybe, you know, take an extended break and let people make calls or even go home and check and come back at 3 o'clock or something. If that's a possibility, we could still work for a couple hours yet this afternoon. But um, whatever the court thinks is best, we certainly will um, be prepared either way. I certainly would be open to maybe an extended break so that I and others could do exactly what you just say. I've, um, but I'll hear from you, sir, if you have any position on that. Yeah, I do have a position on that. Um, I, I agree with your first uh, assessment, Your Honor, um, mainly because, too, with severity and weather, that can sometimes mess with uh, equipment being uh the trial being televised that can possibly uh interrupt that um and you never know some some people that may be key to this matter may not be able to come back after an extended break there i mean there's no way to tell at this point um i do believe it would on the air uh, uh just for cautionary reasons would be wise to kind of break for the day and then reset uh, tomorrow morning or whenever the court feels it's best. Uh, I, I may need to do some checking of my own with some close relatives of my own. And so I would want to put that on record as well. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. 
I presume though no objection from anyone to at least finishing up with Mr. Knapp. It appeared to me we were close to being done, including whether he's fine with that as well. And he's shaking his head, yes. State really quick for the record, Your Honor. Um, I'm still, I guess I would say, uh, waiting to obtain a, a filing that I addressed before we went on record. I don't know what that means, sir, but I need to bring the jurors out. I need to finish with the cross examination um, portion of Mr. Knapp's testimony. Uh, and then, um, in all likelihood, we'll just break for uh, the day. I'll make, um, so I understand wanting to maybe come back at a little point a little bit later, but I think it's just best to break for the day. I will entertain, though, over um, the next two days, whether we go a little bit extended to make up for the loss of the afternoon. I'm well aware we have the interpreter here as well, and so I'll have to have... Um, the clerk's office communicate with her when we're not on the record as to when she can come back um, and when we can get that other that witness back or yeah, here. Yeah, he's here and ready to go, Your Honor. All and, right. And um, Your Honor, just for the record, just real quick, um, there is a jury instruction as a preliminary instruction for use with interpreters. I wasn't sure if the court was aware of that. I am aware okay, of that. Perfect. Thank you. I'll have to. Get that ready probably needs a little bit of tweaking so thank you um i'm aware of it give me the number though so i don't have to search for it 60. 60 okay thank you thank you just you just say 60 so all right jury instruction 60 and i'll uh work on that uh when we're uh down this afternoon so all right let's bring the jurors out and then we'll uh mr knapp you can take the witness stand and be there when they come back in Jurisdiction, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, my previous record on that issue stands. I will not further be addressing it without a proper motion for reconsideration that complies with the statute. I just wanted to state that for the record. So noted. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. When we unexpectedly broke uh, prior to the lunch hour, Mr. Knapp was on the witness stand, and uh, he was being cross-examined. Sir, you may continue. to apologize to the court. I, I'm not sure where I left off at. <laughs> um, Go ahead and just start back up. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm trying to see if I took any notes that would get me back to where I was before the break. Do you recall uh, making uh, or being interviewed by law enforcement in the days following the incident? I was. 
Uh, do you recall what date that was? I believe it would have been the 23rd. Um, my daughter was released from the hospital after a stay overnight, um, which would have been the 22nd, and I believe it was the 23rd. I could, could be mistaken on that. Do you recall if that was just to uh, make arrangements for the interview at that time? Um, the recollection I have was um, actually being um, questioned about the incident. You don't recall uh, making arrangements to be interviewed and then approximately four or five days after that actually being interviewed? Again, I don't recall the exact date. In my mind, it was um, the day after we got home from the hospital. Um, and yes, arrangements were made to um, meet with a detective. Do you recall being interviewed on November 20, 29th of 2021? Again, I don't recall the exact date. You made reference to um, Clinton Street being uh, a cross street that was close by. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. Do you recall if Clinton Street had any barricades? I do not recall. Did you did you go down Clayton Street at that moment? Yes, I did, as stated. Uh, did you call recall any uh, law enforcement being present at the Clinton Clinton Street? I'm sorry, the Clinton Street uh, side side crossing, I guess. Yes, there was a, a law enforcement officer on the south side of the street and. As I mentioned before, uh, uh, he helped save a lot of lives by pushing our children back. Appreciate the extra commentary. <clears throat> Do you recall describing the driver as an African-American male with long hair and facial hair? I remember uh, describing the driver of the vehicle that I made eye contact with as a, a, a black male with facial hair. Um, I don't ne necessarily recall stating long hair. Um, I have the summary right here of the interview that you gave with law enforcement on November the 29th of 2021. And reading from that summary. Brown, I'm going to object again for the same reason I Browns. objected before. This is in a statement um, or a supplement by Detective Jeff Adent, A-D-E-N-T, from the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department, in which he met up with this witness. This witness provided information to the detective. I understand. I don't need the full okay. explanation. Um, I'll just sustain the, uh, the objection as to the form of the question. I know you didn't fully get it out, but I think I know where you were going, so please rephrase. <clears throat> would, would the reference to the statement that I referred to about the long hair, if I was able to show you, would it bring any recollection of what you may have said during that interview? Uh, no, if, if I stated it at that time, then that was my recollection at that time. Um, 11 months later, my recollection of the statement is that I made eye contact I'm not referring to that, uh, to that statement. I'm referring to the statement that that reads David, or yes, or wait, let me let me back up. Were were there some confusion in, um, with your name in this report? Not that I'm aware of. 
It looks like the the officer that was taking the report got a little confused on the name. Mr. Burns, you're providing a narrative, so that's not a question. He doesn't have the report in front of him, so please make sure you ask the question. Do you recall reading from the summary, describing the driver as an African-American male with long hair? As stated, whereas I sit today, I remember describing the driver as a black male with facial hair and very wide eyes. If I stated that at the time, that was my recollection at the time. As I sit here today, I do not, I cannot state that I recall having or seeing long hair. Would it be fair to say that what I'm, what I'm reading from is an accurate, accurate statements made by you to the law enforcement officer? Objection. Same reason I mentioned. There's a lack of foundation as to the question, so I'll sustain it, and if you are able to rephrase, please. Can I show the witness his statements? Maybe that may, maybe that may bring some recollection back of what was said in the interview. I'll allow it. If you would give the statement to the bailiff who can then give it to the state. I don't know if you have it electronically or if we want to use the document camera. I have it in front of me. All right. Is it connected to the? It needs to be given to the witness. Again, I'm going to object. If he's using it to refresh recollection, that's fine, but this witness says it does not refresh his recollection. I'm objecting to any questions. I understand. Okay. I object to that because. Hold on. Let's show, you've asked that it be shown to the witness. It will be shown to the witness. Is there a particular paragraph you want to direct his attention to, Mr. Brooks? The paragraph that I referred to when he stated that the driver was an African-American male with long hair. All right. So, sir, just take a moment to review that. When you're done reviewing it, turn it over, and then Mr. Brooks will ask you some follow-up questions. For the record, I don't consent to being called that name, Your Honor. For the record, I'm third party to the matter, Your Honor. Go ahead and ask a question to see if it helps refresh his recollection. From reading that summary of the interview that you gave with law enforcement, do you recall stating that the driver was an African-American male with long hair? I recall stating what I stated before, that it was a black male with facial hair and white eyes. I don't recall stating long hair. Would it be fair to say that the summary that is in front of you states that that's what you said? It would be hearsay. I'm stating directly what it says on the paperwork. It's still hearsay, Mr. Brooks. So the objection is sustained. Next question. Is it fair to say that that's what the... That's hearsay. So... It's hearsay when it's right there for him to read? Mr. Brooks, I direct your attention to the hearsay statute, all right, for a definition of 908.01 and the rule in 908.02. So it's not a fair... Sustained. Next question. Do you recall if the driver had hair? Any hair whatsoever? I recall seeing facial hair. Any hair on their head? I don't recall at the moment, as we sit today, picturing exactly if I saw hair or if I didn't. Any reason why you wouldn't be able to see the driver's head? My eyes were locked on a vehicle that was driving at a high rate of speed with the person driving the vehicle's eyes extremely wide. And then at that moment, my full attention went to my children where that vehicle was driving at a very high rate of speed. 
So it would be fair to say that if you, because you keep making reference to the eyes. So would it be fair to say then that because you were so fixated on the eyes that it would be hard to tell any other features of the driver? I'm stating what I saw, white eyes, black male, facial hair. Would it, would it, being so fixated on the eyes, would that in any way make it hard for you to see any other facial description? I'm not sure of the definition, your definition of hard. I'm stating what I saw. Do you recall if there was anything on the driver's head, a hat or anything of that nature? I don't recall. You stated that it was an African-American male. Do you recall a skin complexion? I do. Was it a dark skin complexion? It was. Would it be fair to say that who you identify today does not have a dark complexion? I guess it depends upon the definition of dark. What is your definition of dark? Because in all fairness, you said dark skin. So what would be your definition of dark skin? Dark skin as present on uh, my interaction with black males in the past. So every black male that you've had an interaction with was dark skin? Again, it depends. There's different complexions of dark and it depends upon what complexion or what, what your definition of dark is. I'm asking your definition because you said dark skin. To this line of questioning. This, the point grounds. has been made. This witness identified the defendant, Daryl Brooks, as a person driving the car. I think he's asked the question about dark skin. I, I think that this has been asked and answered. Objection. I'm going to sustain the objection as to the form of the question. I believe the way it's asked is argumentative. Um, you may rephrase if you so choose. May my, may my uh, objection be noted that I do not identify by that name, nor do I know anybody by that name. I don't consent to being called that name. Noted. Next question, please. <coughs> Have you ever had any other interactions with any black males that were not considered dark-skinned by your definition? I'm not, I don't understand your question. Have you had any previous interactions with African Americans that were not dark skinned? Objection Grounds. Um, overruled, it relates to his identification. He may answer. As stated before, um, my interactions with black males before, um, there are different levels of complexion and um, Color tone, color tones, dark, darker versus lighter, um, and I have interacted with black males before that have uh, been both lighter and darker skin tones. Yes. Would it be fair to say that you didn't give that clarification when asked before? I don't understand your question. Would it be fair to say that you did not give that clarification when asked the same question before? What clarification are you referring to? You you strictly said um, the skin tone. You came to the conclusion that it was dark skin based on your interactions with African American males before. Would it be fair to say that that's what you testified to? That I I can identify um, the skin tone color um, is is what I stated and um, the person that was driving the vehicle had a darker skin tone. I had it.
the uh, paperback that he has. I might have a question in front of Chet. That specific part of the. Marcus George Blockbee, one page of the police report being handed back to the defendant. From your recollection of uh, the interview with law enforcement, do you recall stating that you don't vividly recall any acceleration? I do recall stating that. And just for clarification for the record, you did not see the vehicle strike anyone once it was past your location. When it passed me, I saw the vehicle strike my daughter. The location, the location where you where you were at, you made reference to being near that intersection corner, I think it was. So once, after, once it was past that location is what I'm referring to. Right. So after the vehicle struck my daughter, and then past that location, I ran to my daughter as stated, and I did not see, other than the vehicle swerve back towards Main Street, the vehicle strike another human being. So you did not see it, just for clarification, because that was, that was a lot of commentary. For That's clarification correct. for the record, you did not see it strike anyone else once it was past that location where you and your family were. That is correct. No further questions. Any redirect? <coughs> right, thank you. Sorry, you might step back. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have made a determination that today we are going to break early, just given all of the weather issues that happened earlier today. Um, frankly, including the need on my part to check on my house um, and other things. Um, and uh, I just felt it best, just given all of that and the disruption uh, that we would break for the day. I do want you, uh, as you go back home today, to look at your schedules for the next two days because I may keep us here a little bit later to make up for some of the lost time, at least tomorrow. Um, so just let uh, the civilian jury bailiffs know tomorrow when you come in. Um, I do want to read to you the instructions uh, that I've been providing to you uh, regarding not starting your deliberations and uh, the extra research, etc. So do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic devices such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. If you come in contact with the parties, the lawyers, interpreters, or witnesses, do not speak with them. For their part, the parties, lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene either in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other electronic application or tool about this trial. 
Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the Internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in this case. Any information you may obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this information is unfair because the parties would not have the opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device, including personal wearable electronics applications or tools with communication capabilities to share any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter, either in person, electronically, or by any other means. If anyone does so, despite your telling them not to, you should report that to me. I appreciate that it is tempting when you go home to discuss this case with another member of your household, but you may not do so. This case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in the courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence, and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After the trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout the trial. If any juror has reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. With that, you are excused for the day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, I'm going to check with the jurors and if anything changes we'll let the parties know but otherwise plan on being here at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Will there be an interpreter? Would we be I have to I won't know let me we'll do that off the record uh, I don't know if Don Maldonado state or not but um, if not we'll contact her and we'll be in touch with you very quickly so that we can tell you if that witness needs to come back tomorrow or another day because it, it might not be her they could turn to one of our other interpreters okay. all right thank you everyone we are in recess